hello, hello, hello. Happy Friday and welcome to Mystic Sensation Live with your host, Baron and Anne Marie. And tonight's topic is Jamaica and Judas. I just want to say happy Friday to everyone out in um, television land, um, all our silent viewers, and also those in um, the chat. Hope everyone had a wonderful and productive week. And as usual, looking forward to a wonderful and restful weekend. Again, we are in a new year. So happy new year to those who we have not seen since the start of the new year. Um, hope everyone, um, wishing everyone a blessed, wonderful and prosperous new year. And also to our new subscribers, thank you so much. Really appreciate um, you coming on board and for everyone who has been supporting us. Um, thank you so much. Really appreciate each and every one. So I'm just going to go ahead and welcome those who are in the chat. Um, so we have Arlene Forrest, um, Cooking with Miss Brown, Truck Life, Sidney um, Johnson and Family, Larry Beckford, Sonia Foster, Owen Siegel, Yvonne Johnson, saying good night to you both and to each and everyone in Jesus' name. Thank you so much as usual. Mm -hmm. um, Joey B., uh, Cynthia saying, thank God, it's Friday. There's a na <laughs> natural mystic blowing through the air. Exactly. Listen carefully and you will you hear. hear. Okay. Yes. Rape One, Carla Evans, Blendon, um, Sassy, Montague James, Fitzroy Palmer, RJ, AG Barn Jamaican, Patricia Williams, Vandetta, Anne Bennett, um, Deborah Cohen. <laughs> Barbara Finley, um, oops, it's jumping a bit fast. Hold on, let me just go back. And then it's okay. So Barbara Cohen, Vandetta, Barbara Finley, Dwayne Thompson, Danet Wainwright, Larry Beckford, um, Miss Birdie, um, Mersin James, Queen, Spectra, Charmin Flowers. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, Montague is asking, um, Baron, are you involved in the march on the 19th of January, Thratigan in Mammy? No, we are in Canada. Canada. We're in Canada, we so we have to, but we are in full support, support of yeah. them. Um, John Sinclair, Nardi, welcome, welcome, saying good evening, well thinking people, blessings to you, Anne Marie and Baron. Thank you so much. So without um, any further delay, I'm going to hand over to Baron to start the discussion. And as usual, I'm just going to be doing some housekeeping. Don Mel, welcome. Happy Friday. Love the topics, Miss And Thank you so much, Miss Brown. Yes. And Keith Salmon, welcome. The truth, welcome. Yes, waiting for the Canada March, says truth. Welcome, truth. Happy exactly. Friday. Yes. All right, so over to you, Baron. All right. Um, thank you, Oni, for that um, precursor there. I want to say... Um, Ladies and gentlemen, all subscribers, all new and persons who continue to follow us um, in TV land and so forth, I want to say a big thanks to you all, right, to help to keep us going, help to strengthen us, right, as it relates to our critical time in our political venture. Now, tonight is going to be extremely serious. Um, I want to tell all Jamaicans, as it relates to the diaspora and in the local, that I will be venturing into a document tonight as it relates to the Integrity Commission and as it relates to the possibility of it affecting the six members of parliament right under the microscope of illicit enrichment. This documentation and a new amendment, new amendment, right, in the Integrity Commission Act, right, as it relates to statutory declaration, right, is quite serious and I am going to peruse it, right? We are going to go through um, that um, document. Somewhat stunning, right? But the truth be told, I, am, I want to see clarity 
and that situation because if it is what I believe it is, no doubt, no doubt that Andrew Holness government is the most corrupt. And we are going to prove certain things tonight, bringing evidence, right? So that is what to come, right? Very serious issue, right? And, I'm, and I hope that other vloggers may follow up on that information because that is critically serious. Now, um, without any um, delays, right? And people, we are talking about, when we talk about being prudent, goes back to what I said when I give, you know, um, my subjective opinion as it relates to why the Integrity Commission need not to haste with the report relating to the six members of parliament and send that to parliament. We have seen that the DPP rule on a particular case. And even though you have plain evidence, the DPP utilize what we call time limit to dismiss that case. But let me say something. We have been observing a trend as it relates to this DPP. And I'm not going to hesitate that most of the DPP ruling is highly biased. I'm going to prove it with evidence. And a ruling, most of a ruling as it relates to Jamaica Labour Party hierarchy, right, and their corruption, always, right, rule in their favor. I am going to come with plain history to show that evidence. And for Paula Novelin to utilize what we call delay tactics, right, to not wanting to pursue criminal charges or prosecute the case is ultimately wrong, politically aligned politically biased, right? The DPP is not ruling on behalf of the people of Jamaica. Obviously, she's ruling on behalf of the Jamaica Labour Party government, right? Without any further ado, I am going to peruse through um, the document um, because, you know, a lot of persons have already have this information, but I am going to break it down, right? Um, Honey, um, without any further ado, um, let us go to the first document, NWC President right, of White Presentation. Okay. Right, where you have a case that the evidence is solid and the DPP utilizing the late tactics to dismiss that case is highly immoral. So let us look at this, my people. All right. Sharing. Yeah. All right. So here we have it. Right. President of National Water Commission. President of National. President of National Water Commission in bracket NWC Mark Barnett and his wife Annette Francis Barnett will not be prosecuted in connection with allegations that they breach an environmental permit an offense under the Natural Resources Conservation Authority Act, NRCA. This following a ruling by the Office of the Director of the Public Prosecution yesterday, Mr. Barnett, who has been the NWT since 2015, was placed on administrative leave last October following allegations of irregularities in the approval processes, which led to the construction 
of a residential development in Charles Mountain, Char Charles Mount Drive, Kingston 6. In the ruling, the DPP explained that although the allegations support the line of criminal charges against Mr. Barnett, so let me, re let me read over that again, because the DPP herself admitting, admitting that it is clear evidence to charge Mr. Barnett. So in the ruling of the ODPP explained that although the allegations support the lane of criminal charges against Mr. Barnett and his wife, the initiation of the prosecution is time sensitive. That is extremely foolishness. The ODPP explained further that since the prosecution was not initiated within, within 12 months of the identified breach, the criminal action is now statute barred. Therefore, there can be no prosecution. Take that away. Ladies and gentlemen, so the DPP is not arguing that there is any lack of evidence. But what the DPP, depending on, right, is time duration to the fact that she claimed that the time had the time had um, has been exceeded, and so she decided not to proceed, right in terms of prosecuting that case. That is, in its highest sense of corruption, and I'm going to show the people why. But let us look at the pattern of behavior as it relates to Paula Lubelin. Now you realize, people. Why Paula Lubelin time has been extended? Paula Lubelin time has been extended to protect Andrew Olness government, right? She's not there to ensure justice being done for the Jamaican people. Now, let us look at another case where it involved another. Jamaica Labour Party hierarchy. And it is the same pattern of behavior when it comes to mystic sensation. Mystic sensation goes into history. Mystic, um, um, mystic sensation is going to deal with, you know, um, comparison. He's going to deal with contrast and he's going to show you, right? And so then you have a clear understanding of how Paula Lubelin, you understand, make her decision. Paula Lubelin, based on Paula, Paula Lubelin's record of prosecuting right, cases that involve hierarchy of our society, particularly with the Jamaica Labour Party, is extremely low. I am not just speaking that out of my mouth. The history and the evidence is there to support that every time Paula Lubelin Dealing with a case, a hierarchy case, elites of society, right? Paula Lewin prosecutorial record is extremely low. Now, watch this. Anytime Paula Lewin is dealing with ordinary people, ordinary Jamaican, right? Um, when it comes to the poor, ordinary Jamaican, Paula Lewin tutorial rate is extremely high. What is that? Grossly, grossly unfair, right? And so then Paula Lovelin, moral compass has been flatlined. Let me show you other evidence so that what I'm saying, I am not appearing to be biased against um, Paula Lovelin, but the history goes to show as it relates to Paula Lovelin behavior when it comes to elite and prosecuting those cases. Without any further ado, let us go to the next clip, right, to show the evidence. Corruption related charge brought against Mr. Victor. Okay. So I just want to show the evidence. Right. Um, Wife is trying to um, get that. Um, okay, all right. So here we go. It's, it's shared. Yeah, let me just grab the 
because I want to for them to see um, what I'm talking about. Okay. So here it is. Another JLP hierarchy. Corruption-related charges brought against Mr. Daryl Vaz, MP, Senior Superintendent of Police, Mr. James Forbes, and businessman Mr. Bruce Bittner, for those persons who remember this case. In advancing the national imperative of more effective combat of corruption in Jamaica, National Integrity Action views the charges laid against Mr. Daryl Vaz, MP, Senior Superintendent of Police, James Forbes, and businessman Mr. Bruce Bignell in the framework of two fundamental principles of democratic governance. Namely, one, each Jamaican of whatever station in life must be presumed innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Hence, no one should try, convict, nor absolve the person's charge prior to the findings arising from the impending trial. Secondly, no Jamaican, however, exemplary their record nor outstanding their service is above the law. At the heart of the rule of law is equality before the law. However, regrettably, but indisputably, too many experiences in Jamaica confirm that the wealthy, as I was saying before, prominent are politically connected, are treated in a privileged way, and that is no lie. But the justice system compared to the disadvantaged, the vulnerable, the poor, and those who have no connections, this conclusion was confirmed in the report of the most comprehensive examination ever undertaken of Jamaica's justice system by the Jamaican Justice Reform Task Force, chaired by the late Professor Barry Chavans and including then Chief Justice Lindsay Wolf and representatives from the private sector, the church, the Jamaican bar, and the civil society. A key finding of this over 300-page report was that the Jamaican justice system is too unequal. From one spoiler, Llewellyn is there. You're going to have that unequality. Lack of the equality between the powerful, the wealthy, the litigant, and the under-resourced litigant, lit litigant. Survey after survey of the opinions of the Jamaican people confirms their agreement with this conclusion. The most recent in the UNDP Caribbean Human Development Report and Citizen Security 2012 found that 53% of Jamaicans believe that the powerful criminals go free and 58% that politically connected criminals go free. So take that away, right? Definitely speaks in terms of what I'm saying here, the evidence, the research that had done right, reveal the evidence that the criminal justice system, one of which Paula Llewellyn anchored as the crown prosecutor of the country, right, showing that level of biasness, showing that level of political one-sidedness, right, totally unfair. So when you look at a situation in where you have persons, right, connected to the Jamaica Labour Party, clear evidence, right, and that if you put them in the judiciary, obviously they are going to be found guilty. What Paul Olivier done is not wanting to pursue charges, right, and then show a clear biasness. How can that be justice to Jamaican people? Now, let me show you, right, as it relates to the persecution protocol. So when someone hear Mystic Sensation speaking, um, Duane Anglin, she said, don't put the blame on her. Is the liar to be blamed. No liar to be blamed. No liar to be blamed. Um, Duane Anglin, right? It is Paula Llewellyn own doing right paula lovelin has the authority where she can 
use her powers, right, in terms of ensuring that justice being done. She can do it. So when she sit, right, on the sideline, anticipating things, a delay for it, you understand, to, to pass certain limitation, where she quickly is going to point out, okay, there is the limitation. This is not one case or two cases or three cases or four cases. Several cases of Paula Lovillen do, um, been doing that. Several cases. Now, let us look. Let us go into the prosecution protocol at the DPP's office. Let us read, right, how the protocol is to be utilized, right, as it relates to her office, right, her functions. So without any further ado, let us go into prosecution protocol. So I'm going to show the people that, you know, I mean, I am not being biased here against Paula Lovelin, right? I am, I am, I am, I am utilizing, um, just make sure it's been shared. Yes, I am, I am utilizing, um, per protocol, right? Let us, so there is a decision to prosecute, right? A Jamaican protocol, decision to prosecute people. So the decision to prosecute, and the thing there, right? The first paragraph said, must demonstrate fearlessness, impartiality. That's a big thing, impartiality. And a monumental work ethic in order to achieve the desired objective. Now, as I come to Paul Lovelin, from my appointment as DPP in March 2008, I observed at the time that I was fully aware of the public's clamor of tr for transparency. You hear what Paula Lewin says? She's fully aware of the public clamors for transparency and accountability and what she promised. I will certainly be moving along with my team to enhance the managerial structure and to put in place systems which will help to assist in respect of this transparency and accountability. So far, Paula Lovelin, you are not transparent and you have no accountability. This protocol is another step in the process of providing that sort for and promise full, fuller transparency. It will be a living document which will be revised period periodically to reflect local and international development in prosecutorial practices and relevance of laws, right? Now, the trial of matters generally is fueled by the will and capability of the prosecutor, but is also influenced in no small way by the other variables, such as factors per pertinent to the other stakeholders in the trial process. Resource constraints, availability of witness, and the peculiar factual circumstances of each case. Now, in the interest of justice, this is what Paul Lewin is saying. In the interest of justice, the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution, here and after, referred to as the DPP, at all times must strive to exercise the best discretion in determining which matters to continue and which matters to discontinue. Right, so take that away. So then, let me ask Paul a little bit. In this case, that you, re you, 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 you recently decided that you are not going to prosecute as it relates to the, mount of, the mountain of evidence and the interest that the people want transparency. I am asking you, Paula Lovelin, based on your judgment, do you believe, Paula Lovelin, that you have given the people of Jamaica justice? Do you believe that? Because you have, you have to anchor your decision, right, based on the pillars of justice and transparency. And so then, obviously, Paula Lovelin, we see clearly that you are highly political, you are highly biased, and the Jamaican people, right, they are not getting the justice where Paula Lovelin 
stand. And so people, for me, let me, you know, um, um, repeat as what I said, where the Integrity Commission, right, as it relates to the six, illicit, um, the illicit six, based on parallel in history. This is the reason why I said that it best, it is better to deal with that process under new governance. And where Paolo Lovelin is not the head of the prosecutorial realm. If the Integrity Commission, right, has to expedite that case to send that to Parliament, what happened here is going to happen with the six. And remember, remember that Paula Lovelin is going to utilize time limits again in that case. So this is the primary example why I said what I said. And I want people to follow me. Primary example, seem to be. Byron, do you think this is their way to discredit the ICC? Exactly. And so they can use the excuse to say that the IC is dysfunctional and so trying to dissolve the agency. They are trying all of that to protect you understand and cover up their corruption. This is a systematic, right? Corrupted government. She should be charged for the reduction of duty. Right? And as my wife said, it is clear the reduction of duty. Right? Because when you look on the case and the evidences, right, that is so plain, then you have seen clearly where Paula Lovelin showed her on in an extremely biased and political way, right? And there is no doubt within um, that. Now, people, let us go to something better that I love. And I wouldn't mind other GLP cross the floor. <laughs> in right? I wouldn't mind, right, um, for more GLP people who decide that the GLP should be sinking and want to jump ship, right, and have their service, right, elsewhere. Without any further ado, let us look on the GLP councillor Romeo Morris, which is allegiance. Okay. All right, so people, let me show you what is happening as it relates to persons leaving from the GLP party, right? Going over to um, the PNP, right? So it seems like the Jamaica Labour Party under pressure, and rightly, rightly so, right? So without any further ado, let me just share this clip with you. Hey man, I will let you hear when I see you. I find a seat for you, David Sabin, I hope this little finds you well. I write to you to inform the Prime Minister Corporation of my decision to switch political allegiance from the Jamaica Labour Party to the People's National Party with immediate effect. This change is based on my personal, my personal, my personal conviction and a realignment of values and views. I'm committed to ensure that some more transition. And, uh, and, and to more transition and appreciate your understanding in this matter. Yes, one hundred percent. One hundred percent, Mr. Romney and Morris. You understand? See your man leave the ship because when the ship get corrupted, if you are not corrupted, swing them. You understand? Swing them. So we love what Romain Morris is doing. You understand? Making sure that he jump off of the Jamaica Labour Party corrupted ship. You understand? And move to somewhere else that has honesty and integrity. Right? So we love that. Yes, Mr. Byron, see we so you understand she has the power to override any decision. Of course. 
Now, um, yeah, so we finished with the introduction. Now, Jamaican people, let me talk to you. Last year, September, my wife and I, we visited Jamaica, right? And of course, I run some canvas in some critical areas, particularly St. James, where I visited. So I visited two parishes there, St. James, and of course, Port Moore, St. Catherine, right? And I came back, right, to Canada. And based on my experience in terms of my canvassing, I said, no, sir. St. James gone orange. Remember that St. James was fully green. GLP had won the five constituency in St. James. Fully green. And when I went back and I had spoken to key individuals, key people, some of those who strongly supported the Jamaica Labour Party. Didn't want nothing to do with the Jamaica Labour Party. And I know I came back and so people go and look back on the clip that immediately when I came back from, Canada, from Jamaica I said JLP had lost St. James and if you lose St. James, there is no way you can win either local or general election. If you go back on the clip, for people who are following me, realize that I said that. Right? Realize that after I did my canvas, I understand very well that St. James fully PNP. And I am without no hesitation. I am going to show that okay, what I had seen then, I confirmed a couple days ago. What I had seen then, I confirmed a couple days ago. And yet, worse left to come as it relates to this last judgment. Paula, dear. Is Nipah's fault? Yep. <laughs> that is <laughs> right. And Paula Lovelin, it's Paula Lovelin's fault. Now, now let us let us check what happened in St. James. And I am so proud of St. James, right? Letting the Prime Minister know. So watch out. Your clerks now go cut it again. The money, what you are spending, now go cut it again. You understand? Because this time the people them plan. To take your money, right? And vote you. So let me tell you that if you don't know that, the people are planning to take your money and vote you because I'm done with you, Andrew. The people them finish away with you. All right, so without any further ado, you want to play that clip. Rice and chicken back one, a better day. Rice and chicken back two dear, you just like it's expensive. No, 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 Mr. Broga, I want to go and tell them about it. I want to run my business. I don't want to pay them tax like you're trying to get them. That's all. That's all I want to do, boss. I want to run my business. I don't want to pay them tax like you're trying to get them. I live now. Then I'm not going to run up there. I'm not going to run up there. I'm trying 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 to run up there. Mr. Chang, I live in paradise and know me. The, the place needs police station at Uga. No, 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 no. Okay, all right. So I want to spread the news loud and clear that the People's National Party 
very united, strong and powerful and moving forward. No look behind. No looking behind. Now, we have seen that Mark Golden had made some decision as it relates to his shadow cabinet. And then you have two Jamaica Labour Party stalwart, right? Run out and want to criticize, want to create some disunity amongst the People's National Party. Let me tell you something, Light B. Smith. It is not going to work. Whatever strategy, you know, I try because you know, say, you know, really I lose out in the pool and I lose rapidly. Let me use the word rapidly. Let me use that adverb rapidly. Right? Don't try to sow any form of disunity. It's, it is not going to happen. It is not going to happen. So, without any further ado, let us see how these two little stalwart, JLP stalwart, want to try to shape this unity after Mark Golden tried to put forward right, a very effective shadow cabinet. So, without any further ado, let us. Okay, all right. Before I get into that, let me confirm again to Jamaica Labour Party. Let me confirm to them again that don't don't do the very Jamaican Labour Party supporters finish away with you. Let me play this clip and show you the evidence because when we talk, we don't make up things around here. We talk and facts. So let me show you that even your horn, even your horn going against you. Without any further ado, play that clip. Make sure someone share the clip here, you know, because the JLP them need to see this. You understand? The people are done with them. The people are done with them. All right. So that is evidence in the street of what is happening, right? We are JLP people taking off their shirt, stepping up on their shirt. It's done. It's finished. Right? Seem to be Mr. Morris jump <laughs> because the last time the captain for this ship jumped off at SSL. And left the passengers to drown. <laughs> yes. So um, okay. So let us look on what Mark Golden is doing in terms of a diversity as it relates to knowledge and persons with the weakness, right? And try to mix the old with the new, right? And putting together right a strong force you understand to deal with the people's the people's issues and represent them well and i do believe that this is a very very effective shadow cabinet without any further ado let us put um that out um so um we're going to talk about the tv show cabinet already oh. Okay, so let us hear what the critiques are saying first before we go into Mark Golden um, shadow cab cabinet. Let us hear the GLP um, um, criticizers, right? What they have to say, right? Without any further ado, on it, let us play that clip. Right. 
Okay, that is coming up. Um, you have it in English. Okay. Okay, let us hear what the GLP critique has to say about this. Now, in an election mode, um, the local government elections are due very, very shortly to be followed by the general elections. And so, you know, in terms of the policy directions of a PMP, um, those should have been out there already and being discussed and being debated. Um, at this stage, it becomes almost like a sideshow because the, 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 the voting public uh, would be now more interested in what is being offered by both parties. Because as you know, um, despite the fact that it is a local government election, traditionally in Jamaica, local government elections are like a referendum to, 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 to which people um, relate in terms of which party they think ought to be the government. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a litmus test. Uh, and so I don't think at this point in time, uh, it's going to be a distraction. And already it is a distraction, you know. Um, also, I want to stress that from my point of view, um, <laughs> the term shadow cabinet is a bit of a misnomer. And I say this, um, originally, as you know, we have adopted the British system of government. And originally, a shadow cabinet was really what it was supposed to be, shadowing the government ministers. The word shadow, if you think of even a detective following, you know, something around it, shadowing. Um, that was what it was originally meant to be. Over the years, we have tinkered with this um, concept of shadow cabinet and, and, and use it in a very... You know, here I'm scared away. I mean, every time a shadow cabinet is announced, um, portfolios are changed or added on to or are no longer there. Uh, it's very confusing. It's like the manifestos that the parties put out. It's merely cosmetic. They never achieve much in terms of determining where um, the party goes in an election okay. campaign. So, Lord, so may I, I ask you? May I ask you how you read it, based on what you've said at the start, uh, based on Dahlia's question then, <laughs> you think the timing is bad. How do you read it? Is this a knee-jerk? Okay, sorry. Okay. All right. So everything that um, what coming out of the mouth of Light B. Smith, right, is more like just hot here. Right now, when, when the Jamaica Labour Party utilize their shadow cabinet, he has nothing to say. Has nothing to say. It is okay. But now, Mark Golin utilizes, and he has all the fine, all the criticism um, to make. That to show you that everything that is coming out of his mouth is just at air. Let us go to Mark Golin, right? Um, shadow cabinet, um, 2024. Without any further ado, you want to um, play that tip? Um, this move by Mark Golden, as he stated, that it's showcasing the diverse talent and extensive skill set present within the People's National Party. The new shadow cabinet combines new faces in frontline politics alongside seasoned politicians, all ready to offer solutions to Jamaica's long-standing challenges. And before I'm going further, I'm going to know my people that Lisa Hannah was not a part of this reshuffle. Because, you know, if we can remember from back some time ago, she had indicated that she would be stepping away from representational politics. Right? And she has done her fear um, share of serving the people as the opposition spokesperson on foreign affairs and foreign trade. So Mark Golin said each shadow minister will be supported by a team including deputies as well as their junior shadow cabinet counterparts. And so my people, here's a rundown of the complete reshuffled cabinet 
and the names as well as their um, new role are as follows. So the shadow minister, leader of the opposition and defense is still Mark Golden. Foreign and regional affairs was now handed to Dr. Angela Brown Burke, Justice Senator Donna Scott Motley, Local Government and Participatory Democracy Natalie Nita Garvey, Information and Public Communication Nikisha Burchell, Shadow Minister without Portfolio with Special Responsibility for Affairs Concerning Portmore is Fitz Jackson, Finance and Public Service Julian Robinson, Agriculture and Rural Development Dr. Dayton Campbell, Investment, Trade and Global Logistics Anthony Hilton, Science, Technology, Innovation and Entrepreneurship Dr. Andre Orton, Tourism and Linkages Senator Janice Allen, Culture and Creative Industries Dr. Deborah Hickling, Labor and Sports Wavell Hines, Environment and Ecological Heritage Senator Sophia Fraser Bins, Citizens Security and Productivity Senator Peter Bunting, Education and Community Development Senator Damian Crawford, Health and Wellness Dr. Alfred Dawes, Social Transformation and Social Protection Patricia Sutherland, Gender Affairs Persons with Disabilities and Inclusion Denise Daly, Youth and Civic Engagement Senator Gabriella Morris, Energy and Climate Change Philip Paulwell, Water Ian Hales, Roads and Works Richard Azan, Transport and Mining Mikhail Phillips, Land Lothan Cousins, Housing and Sustainable Living, Senator Dr. Floyd Morris. So there you have it, my people. All the right. whole shadow cabinet reshuffle okay. of 20. Okay, let us let us take that away. All right, people, that is that for that, because where we are gonna move on now is in serious, serious turbulence. And what I had spoken about earlier, as it relates to a new release from the Integrity Commission, and I want people to listen to this because this is extremely important. And there's a few questions I want to ask. And might be I'm going to have to seek some lawyer's advice and where a lot of us in social media need to also speak on this as it relates to the possibility where the illicit six right is concerned when i got this document I have to read it over like five times and ask myself, what is going on? Now, this document was sent to me by a friend, right? Right, this document was sent to me, right, by a friend that I need so, um, you know, we had a we had um conversation about it because you know what we are seeing coming from that, we have to peruse it. So I'm going to share this document and we're going to read it all. And if this is what I believe it is, and let me just give you some tips for Andrew Olness not to reveal is 2021, 2022, and 2023 statutory declaration because this 2021 and 20, 2021 and 2022 cannot be verified. And if, and remember, people, 
I told you that Andrew Owen's most powerful weapon is his 49 members of parliament that he can use and pass laws. And so then this is exactly what he had done, the very exact thing that I had spoken about as it relates to his very powerful weapon. So without any further ado, let me just share the document for people to see it. Without any further ado, honey, open this document. Okay, I know that document is fine here, so I'm going to open my phone and read it um, from my phone to you people, because what I'm seeing here is very troubling, right? So it reads, and I'm reading it from my phone here. Increase of the statutory threshold for the filing of statutory declaration, right? Not all public officials are exempt. Only senior JSTF and J JDF officers need to file. Now, January 8, 2024. Following the passage of an affirmative resolution by the House of Representatives, the prescribed threshold for filing statutory declaration has now been increased. People, I want you to listen. Has now been increased from $3.5 million to $12 million. People, want to get that? I am going to read out the document and come back to that and discuss that. But just make that one in your head. Let me read it one more time. January 8th, 2024. Following the passage of an affirmative resolution by the House of Representatives, the prescribed threshold for filing statutory declaration has now been increased from three and a half million dollars to 12 million dollars we're going to get into it the integrity commission total annual right um emolument exempt from statutory declaration requirement under 2023 resolution was passed by the house on december 18th 2023 despite the increased threshold public officials who occupy certain positions of perform, performing certain functions will still be required to file statutory declarations. Public officials are asked to view the 2023 Gazette of Position to determine if they need to file a statutory declaration by March 31st, right, 2024. So now we can go back up on top of the army people. Right, we want to know what this means. We know that the Prime Minister claims that, right, him not take the new rates. He didn't take the new rates. And so then the new rates would have the Prime Minister salary to about 20 something million dollars. Which part, based on this new law, you understand, would have have him right to fight under the new law now what I, the question that i'm asking being that as it relates to january 8 2024 in this month you know, that this law that we are it we are the house of representative the prescribed threshold for filing secretary declaration has now been increased to three and a half, from three and a half million to 12 million. So the question that I'm asking here, people, right? Because 
I'm at the back of the class with this one. The question I'm asking, the Integrity Commission investigating the six members of parliament, right? Remember now, they weren't getting $12 million. They were getting under that. I don't know, so I am asking the question, is this new law is going to make the entire investigation as it relates to the illicit six non and void? Simple means this new law is saying that, okay, they don't need to file any statutory declaration. I don't know. I'm asking, what is this, people? What is this that we are seeing? What does this mean? Someone needs to come out and tell us whether or not if the investigation relating to the illicit six, to the fact that now we have a law stating that the prescribed amount, the prescribed threshold from $3.5 million lifted to $12 million. So does it, does it mean that those persons doesn't need to verify any documentation? Because remember, you know, the Integrity Commission is also waiting on Andrewness to bring forward certain documents to verify it and see the people, see the people. January 8, 2024, let me talk it out loud enough. You understand? The House of Representatives, right? The prescribed threshold for filing statutory declaration has now been increased from three and a half million dollars to $12 million. What is it that we are looking on? Right? And so then we need to ask the question, how does this, or if any at all, if it affects the six members of parliament under investigation? And if it affects it, why should it affect it when they had done their crime prior to this ruling, prior to this new law. I would want to believe that this new law, right, shouldn't have anything to do with them. And they should, so Sonia Ellis, I can understand the change in the amount because of the increase in salaries. However, the increase seems to be excessive. Exactly. But what we, put up, what we also want to know, um, Sonia, right? How does that, because we need to ask the question. We understand that, okay, yes, the, the, the PA threshold, you understand, of the members of parliament, I. But what I'm talking about, I'm talking about class of laws and where you can have KC lawyers as it relates to these illicit six under investigation. You understand that they are going to say, okay, right, um, based on the new law, you know, because I don't know, I'm answering the question, right? And so then I think we need some clarity, right? If this is going to affect, right, um, previous actions, I don't know. And that is one of the reasons why I'm asking, right? If it is really going to affect um, previous um Situation. So maybe it has to take some, um, you know, um, constitutional lawyers to to explain this um, for us, right? And wish I'm going to seek some advice on this document. I tried to get in touch with um, some lawyers, but unfortunately, I didn't get through. And so then I don't have the information to share. But I will be still trying to try to have this verified, right? How is this going to move forward in terms of the illicit six? Because if this is the case, right? 
And while we understand that, okay, we know that the members of parliament pay height, right, um, to, you know, whatever, right? And so then might be reasonable to lift, but the other side of it doesn't affect, you understand, previous happenings. That is what I want to, um, I am going to query and come back, you understand, and give further update on this situation. So I hope by next Friday, I can um, clarify that. Um, so, well, it's weird, Sophia. Um, here they go again and change the narrative, shape my head. I'm telling you. Okay. Now, people, Janet Jones, please remember the call to action march, which is slated on the 19th of January in Florida and the Jamaican Councillor's Office. Yes, Janet, Jan Jan, thank you very much. Now, people, I am going to show you as it relates to how the world is looking on us, as it relates to corruption. And so then I'm going to go into the Integrity Commission. Um, Sonia, no, the new law would be effective the date of that declaration unless it gave a retroactive date. Okay, Sonia. Okay, I, I, I got that. I hope, Sonia, honestly, I hope that is so. Right? I hope that is so. And so then, if that is the case, we still have the illicit six to answer, right, um, as it relates to um, their issue in terms of illicit enrichment. But as I said, I hope that is so. I think as we speak, they are trying to stall the election. Well, guess what? Janja and I don't believe that, to be honest. <laughs> I honestly don't believe that Andrew Ones getting a wake-up call from out of St. James. He's down in the pool. Right? And remember, I've been saying it all along. Knowing Andrew Wilness, to the fact that he's down in the pool, is ready to call a local government election. Because fear it, people. Fear the fact. The level of corruption, and that is what I'm going to go into next. The level of corruption done by the Jamaica Labour Party. If the People's National Party win the local government election, which I strongly believe that they are going to, it is going to be bang around in terms of the things that are that are going to be found out. And so then that is going to be mayhem. So I am wondering if Andrew Holness really is going to call the local government election as it relates to my best subjective opinion i i don't believe that andrew Wallace is going to call local government election but in the same breath let me say this in the same breath people's national party need to need to be ready ready at the moment notice that if any trick trick up its sleeve the people's national party ready because this man is trying everything to stay in power and as i said he doesn't want to stay in power right as it relates to nation building but the primary reason to be staying power is to continue to hide his corruption you have seen where the criminal justice system is weakened weakened by andrew Wallace government a DPP that fail, you understand, to prosecute. A DPP record that show you when it comes to elites and the hierarchy of the Jamaica Labour Party. There's no prosecution for them. As it relates to um, People's National Party, and this is the difference, right? As it relates to the People's National Party, 
from 1954 prosecuting Jamaica Labour Party with those DPP who were responsible and ensuring that justice being served. And Paula Lumelin, it is different. It is different as opposed to other DPP. Other DPP stand up for justice and have members of parliament prosecuted. Under the entire tenure of Paula Lumelin, Paula Lumelin cannot come out and say, okay, I have prosecuted a member of parliament. Paula Lumelin cannot say that because he has nothing like that in her history. Paula Lumelin is politically biased to the core. He has nothing like that that he can say, okay, here is my history to show you that I am not biased. Right? The record is here for people to um, Google search it and find out that when it comes to the elites, when it comes to JLP hierarchy, Paula Lumelin has no teeth. She see no evil, hear no evil. And depending, right, and time limit to use that as a cover to get out of these people. That's what Paula Lumelin is doing, right? Politically aligned and politically biased. Now, yes, Corner Walker, Mystic Sensation, is there a way to avoid? The time limit since that seems to be repeated tactics by the DPP. Okay, all right, Courtney Walker, I had researched it. And the prosecutor office is extremely powerful. And of course, Jamaica utilize um, time limit. Just like um, United States of America, right? Canada doesn't. But Jamaica and United States of America, they executed time limit. They utilized time limit, right? But again, that time limit must be based on, on the merit of the case and transparency and not having the, prosecu uh, the prosecution team, you understand, that sits comfortably and allowed the delay to take place. This is the situation, you know, in terms of Paula Lovelin sitting and allowing the delay to take place. All right, let us talk about the illicit six people. Isn't that Paula Lovelin sitting, sitting there and allowing the delay to take place? And so then when the delay takes place, now Paula Lovelin is going to come out, okay, I am not going to um, prosecute because um, time limit and so forth and so forth. That's what Paula Lovelin does. Just hope that this one is not retroactive. Yes, Uriel, that is what I'm saying, Uriel. What, what, you, you, what, you, what Uriel means to say, um, just hope that this one, right, is not ret retroactive, um, right? Right? So then, look, the thing is, As it relates to clause of laws, and one of the reasons why I worried, I am worried about that, you know. As it relates to these king councillors, they are very skillful. Right? And now that you have a law stating that okay, they can they, 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 they are not to declare if they are not making 12 million dollars, right? And when I'm asking the question, is it going to affect Right, um, for previous, you know, um, request for their statutory declaration to be declared, then under this new law. So people need to understand what I'm saying. Um, can the mark so true, Rosalie? He shouldn't be allowed to run if he doesn't um declare. Honestly, honestly. So then now, what you what you going to have now as it relates to the prime minister now, as it relates to that new law. Right, that they are um, implemented, that is statutory declaration, 
right, relating to 2023, right? And he's still getting $9 million as a con to him. So the Prime Minister has, you know, a bug to be declared in his statutory declaration based on what that law is saying as it relates to the appropriate date that had been given there. Right? Because the Prime Minister claimed that he's not getting 20 million, him still hold on and him old pay which means, right, going forward as it relates to that law, right, the Prime Minister is not going to declare, right, and that is wrong. Honestly, that's a fundamental wrong. Why should we have a Prime Minister of our country, right, pass a law where he is not going to be a hoax to declare his assets? That don't make no sense. Jamaica, listen to what I say. That don't make no sense. So we are not talking about the illicit six now. We are talking about the Prime Minister going forward and the Prime Minister is the Prime Minister for, um, for the country. Andrew Onus is the Prime Minister for the country. And Andrew Onus is going to pass law in, par law in Parliament where he, him Andrew Onus, doesn't need to declare. Going forward, Based on that law. Does that make sense, people? That is wrong. The Prime Minister should put himself into a position which is the example. But how the Prime Minister is going to set that example when the Prime Minister declared that, okay, he's not going to sign a code of conduct. And then all of his members of parliament follow him, not signing any code of conduct. And now here you have it. Here you have it, as it relates to, let me read it, January 8, 2004, following the passage of the affirmative resolution by the House of Representatives, the prescribed threshold for filing statutory de declaration has now been increased to three, from 3.5 three million to 12 million. Based on how we know the Prime Minister is not getting 12 million dollars in other time to him. <laughs> So then, what this is saying now, and to the fact that the Prime Minister is not getting that 12 million, according to him, his declarations will never be verified. You understand? His statutory declarations now will never be verified. People want to understand this lie, you know. Then you are going to tell me now that, that really and truly, Andrew will let's go past the court to have a law like this. Andrew Owens should make himself be an example, you understand, for his member of parliament to follow and for Jamaican citizens as it relates to good moral attitude. Follow. This goes to show that he's collecting the new salary, not what he was before, because this right? is going to put him in more peril when um, this is. So, so then, when I look at this, Based on what? If the Prime Minister telling the truth because he's lying up. The Prime Minister tell us, to all of us, that he's not collecting the new salary, he had given it back. This simply means that the Prime Minister's salary is worth about $9 million. A law like this that passed, let me read it over again. January 8, 2024, following the passage of an affirmative resolution by the House of Representatives, the prescribed threshold of filing sector declaration has now been increased from three and a half million to $12 million. To so then, under that then, new law, the Prime Minister, um, Sonia, that is just my opinion. They might have a legal clause in somewhere to null and void that laugh out loud and adapt me, they said Sonia, and I, that's why I bring up this so that the whole social media can see it. Right? All right, just hold on and um, let me just answer um, my, um, the scholar here. Yes, scholar, you are live on Mystic Sensation. Go ahead. Good night, sir. What? How are you doing? I'm fine. Yeah, I agree with you. The Prime Minister, he lied all the time. Every time 
when budget debates happen every year, he makes promises and tell lies that they are going to raise billions of dollars from the government to fix roads and those things. They are liars. Yes, I agree with that. Right. Yeah. And these, no politici these politicians don't care about nobody but themselves. They don't care about us as poor people. Are they? They do to us as poor people. They look down on us. No oh, man, we, 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 we as human beings, we really need justice in this country. All right, sir. Man, violence and corruption in this country. It is not an easy road, though. It yes. It is not an easy road. I, 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 I do agree with you. All right, so I have a, I have another call to come in. You have any last word you want to say before I take this call? Yes. Yes, yes go sir. Yes, go ahead. But what I want to say to you, he don't deserve to be a prime minister. What he needs to do as a prime minister, he needs to go about his business and pack his bag and go. Let I tell you something, sir. He is not going to be a prime minister forever. In the next couple of years or so, somebody else will take over as prime minister. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Thank you, Carla, for your contribution. Hold on a second, sir. Yes. Hold on. Do it fast because other callers are on the line. Huh? Yes, you think Damien Crawford deserved to be a prime minister? Damien Crawford. Damien Crawford, he has the potential. He has the ability, he has the capacity. Yes, because I think I was watching an interview a few years ago. You see, he afraid of the politicians, but afraid of the prime minister. But mm. me personally, I'm not afraid of those politicians. All right. I'm not Let... afraid of the prime minister. Okay. Um, okay. I have other callers um that I want to answer. Um, so that is your last point because I need to um attend to another call. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Thanks for calling. Okay. Hello. Yes, you're on Mystic Sensation Live. Please go ahead. Yeah. Good night. Good night, my friend. Yeah. Hear what we? Yeah. Hear what I have to say. We pertaining to the Prime Minister salary. The yeah. Prime Minister Nesta Morgan has come out and stated publicly that the Prime Minister cannot. Cannot reject his salary. It doesn't happen just like that. He cannot, no matter when said, he cannot. The Minister of Information come out and state it publicly. The Prime Minister cannot just come out and say he he doesn't want the PR. He, he doesn't want that salary that he increased for himself. It just doesn't work like that. It have to go through some some legislation. I uh, him have to resign his position not to collect that salary. Okay. So if he if he passed this law and believes uh, because he was not getting um over 12 million, that's why he passed this law. It don't work that way. He he passed this law, this law doesn't mean nothing because he's already collecting collecting the new salary even if it doesn't collect it personally but it, it attached to his pay and it is going to his account so he can't say he's not getting the new salary because the minister of information already stated that the prime minister cannot cannot reject the salary he has to resign to not receive that salary that's all i have to say you know, and thank you for your contribution, uh, my friend. Thank you for that. Okay. So, but, okay. you know, what I'm saying, people, under Andrew Wallace led government, boy, it seems like everything is possible. Right? Um, we know that he's saying that, um, right, he's not utilizing the new salary scale. But we know, based on, you know, um, certain protocol, it cannot be done that way in terms of him just say, you know, um, he's rejecting it, right? It has to go through the passage of law, right, um, to, to, to deal with a certain process. And so then I agreed with what that caller said. But here, 
we have an Andrew Holness government. We have an Andrew Holness government. And so then we are talking about where the rules of laws concern. We have seen time and time again where Andrew Holness himself has broken the or used his arm. 49 members to override, right? Those um, constitutional laws and so forth. We have seen Andrew Holness have, have done that. Right? So it is what it is, my friend, as it relates to him, right? Um, drafting up all sorts of things, you understand, to possibly hide wrongdoing. Right? So the, as it relates to this document, I am just bringing it out. Bringing it out. So then if we see in the future, let, let us put it this way. You understand? If we see in the future that the Integrity Commission is now having problem in Andrew Wellness declaring its 20, um, 23 um, secretary declaration, right? Then, obviously, that is going to be a problem. That is going to definitely be a problem, right? And then now we're going to have to bring back this law that we have just read. This policy position that we have just read, we have to go back to it and ask what is what? Is Andrew Wallace collecting the new salary and telling lie that he's not collecting it to avoid pay, um, declaring his assets? This is madness what is going on in the country now. This is automatically madness. But let us go into some deeper issues, my friend. We have some deeper issues to go into. Now, the Integrity Commission as it relates to the corruption watchdog of the world, of the globe. And we are the, inter the Integrity Commission reference what their record of how Jamaica fit on the corruption scale. We are going to go into some new thing tonight, which is going to be amazing. So I want people to stand back and listen to the following clips because they are extremely important. Without any further ado, um, let us bring up the Integrity Commission immediate, um, no, the Integrity Commission summary of transparency. So we are going to go into the Integrity Commission summary of transparency as it relates to, right? The corruption rating, the global, yes. So have they seen it? Okay. So, so people, let us go into this document because we are going to go into some new avenues tonight. Now, summary of transparency, international 2021 corruption perception index. Jamaica has fallen one place in transparency, international 2021 corruption perception index CPI country rankings. It has moved from position 69 out of 180 countries in 2020 to position number 70 out of 180 countries in 2021. CPI ranking were released this morning, January 25th. Jamaica negative, number two, Jamaica negative performance in 2021. In the TI country ranking has pushed it back to the 70 position that it held in 2018, four years ago. Jamaica 2020 CPI score of 44 out of 100, where zero means highly corrupt. So then if the so so when we think of 50, above 50 is that less corrupted. Right below 50, you understand, is where it's getting highly corrupted. So, people, I want you to take that as a marker above 50, less corrupted, below 50 going down is highly corrupted, and 100 very clean. So, let me read back that Jamaica 2020 CPI score of 44 out of 100, where zero means I corrupt, and 100. Very clean, as however remain unchanged for 2021. 
Jamaica 2021 CPI score of 44. That means high score equals its best ever score of 44. Previously attained only in 2017, 2018, and last year. In the 20 years that TI has been ranked in Jamaica, the country has averaged a CPI of only 37.8 out of 100. Since 2017, 2018, 2020, and 2021 CPI scores of 44, Jamaica had never scored higher than 41. People don't hear that? Jamaica has never scored higher than 41. Its CPI score in 2015, Jamaica lowest CPI score ever was 30, mean extremely corrupt, recorded in. 2009, don't want to stop it there. We are going to stop the document there. Um, hold on. People, we are going to go into some interesting thing. Remember I showed you the document there as it relates to the corruption index and where it talk about the worst year in the history of Jamaica corruption index is 2009. Let me bring up the member, let me bring up all the prime ministers as it relates to the hear their rule. And let me show you where Jamaica Labour Party fits on that and where this report is telling us that whenever Jamaica Labour Party is in power, they bear the highest corruption. So tonight I want to show the world this tonight. Without any further ado, let me show you the Prime Minister who was ruling in 2009. Without any further ado, lift up that document on it. Yes. Okay. So come here, Uncle Bruce. Come here, Uncle Bruce. The index has to set under your governance, Uncle Bruce. Jamaica is the most corrupted place in your entire political history of Jamaica under Uncle Bruce. See the paper, 2007 to 2011. Me not tell no lie upon him. Take that away. Me and him tonight. Me and GLP tonight. We are going to beat them tonight. You understand me? Ready for them tonight. Now, we could go back to the document and read further and show you where the index is saying after Mark Golden installed the Integrity Commission Act, right? That was held to reduce Jamaica corruption. Simple means that to tell you that. Mark Golden is a potential leader. Powerful, strong, and moving forward. Let us go back to the document to show you the proof. Bring up the document. Okay. So we are getting back to the document. Let me just... So we are searching back for the document. Um, why if you make a mistake and um take out the document? So we are good, we are good. Yeah, some of transparency. All right. Okay. Well, I'm not talking to people most far away. They're hearing it. All right, people. Listen me. Just give me one little minute because the hot thing at tonight, you know, we go get into. The heart of the corruption and show people. So let me just, you know, use the little thing there on the cell. Just a little minute. I'm back. Okay. <laughs> okay, guys. So um Sonia was asking about the salary, um, the salary of the prime minister before the increase. I think it was something a little bit in the nine million dollar bracket that he was getting before that hefty increase that um they awarded themselves 
Um, so those who are just joining, welcome, welcome. Happy Friday. Thank you to um, those who are joining in. Um, okay. Then I welcome, welcome. Happy Friday. Just see. Okay. Yes, people. This is Bob Shelley. When I go for you, too big, you know, so I feel well relaxed to fire. This is Bob Shelley, I know. Now, let us get back to the document and show you how powerful my goal it is in terms of fighting against corruption. Right? So, I know, I know, Jamaica said this now. Oh, yes, bring it back. Let us bring, up, bring back the document. So, they are seeing it? So where did, where did we reach? Okay. So where did we reach? Let us read up back because we are coming back to 2009. So number four, in the 20 years that CHI has been ranked in Jamaica, the country has averaged a CPI of only 37.8 out of 100, meaning it is highly corrupt. 2017, 2018, 2020, and 2021 CPI scores of 44 still mean that Jamaica is highly corrupt. Jamaica had never scored higher than 41. Its CPI score in 2015. Jamaica's lowest CPI score ever was 30, right? Recorded in 2009 under Bruce Golden. But we are going to come back and show you why that was so. Number five, Jamaica CPI jump in 2001-2017 rankings came in the same year that Parliament had passed a long-awaited anti-corruption law, the Integrity Commission Act. See it here? So it is not like a different man going. See it, see it right in here, paragraph number five, Jamaica CPI jump in TI 2017 ranking came in the same year that Parliament had passed a long-waiting anti-corruption law, the Integrity Commission Act. Thank God for Mark Golden. The act merged the country's three leading anti-corruption commissions into a single agency, the Integrity Commission, right? Six, ACPI score of below 50 means that a country has serious corruption problem. Jamaica has been firmly planted in this category for 20 years of poor CPI signals, prevalent bribery, lack of punishment of corruption, like what um, Paula Lowell is doing. See it here, see it here, see the evidence here, and public institutions that do not respond to citizen needs. The TI says that Jamaica has been struggling for several years. It has made some progress. The establishment of the major organized crime and anti-corruption agencies as an independent body and the corruption cases recently pursued by the Auditor General Department are two examples. So when we talk about Christie, you understand being effective and the world out there recognize Christie for his hard work. You understand? We know what we are saying when we are talking about, you understand, Integrity Commission and Christie, that Christie, you understand, is indeed a honorable man. However, CI has highlighted that the foregoing um, comes a um, significant resistance to anti-corruption. The Jamaica Labour Party would resist reforms from many politicians in the country. This should be especially noted by the Jamaican government, Jamaica lawmakers, and Jamaica citizens. Take that away. Take that away. Take it away fully now. Yes, take it away fully now. Now, people, now we are getting at the heart of the corruption now and show you how the Jamaica Labour Party, someone in the chat said whenever Jamaica Labour Party gets in power, it is disaster for the country, disaster for the country. That not in Jamaica, you understand, recognizing their corruption, you understand, outside of Jamaica, recognizing, you understand, the corruption and recording all these corruptions. And it goes to show you we are more golden. Come and make a difference. He's not looking good at the moment, so he's not going to call it in February. Me believe that, right? Now, let me show you the art of corruption that took place in 2009 and in Bruce Golden death. This is supposed to shake him up. Now, 
Let me go into 2009, as it related to what the index said, to be the worst of the worst. Persons want to believe, say, GLP and PNP are the same thing. No. Even outside is telling you, right, based on the document when you go through it, right, it's showing you those years of corruption. You understand? Whenever the Jamaican Labour Party touch it, trust me, the treasury suffer. The treasury squeal out loud. The treasury squeal out loud and mercy will help me. But never the Jamaican Labour Party touch the governors. Now, let us go into the art of the corruption and show the people and expose it. Uh, Egla Flesh. Egla Flesh, Jamaica has no prime minister. The man refused to sign the code of conduct required by law and his statutory declaration can't be certified. So where is the, um, the type of um, prime minister? I don't see it. Um, may I tell him? It's sick. And see, and see, now we have something here as it relates to what I read earlier. You understand? Is the um wish brew? It's really troubling what is going on in Jamaica. I mean, I tell you, wish brew, but wish brew, watch this. Look at this document. Look at this document, wish brew. What I'm going to touch next. All right, without any further ado, honey. Um, let us go into Jamaica former prime minister opens up about all right. I'm going to show you where the corruption lies, where the government link, right, with corruptors. Right? Come here, Uncle Bruce. Jamaica former Prime Minister opens up about coke arrests and extradition. It was August 2009 when the US first asked for the extradition of the Jamaica drug lord, Christopher Dudus Coke. More than a year passed before his arrest in June 2010. The delay led to diplomatic crisis. My tell us the Jamaica Labour Party used delayed tactics, and that's why the DPP are used it too. And one of the bloodiest episodes in Jamaica history. Cook barricaded himself inside of Tivoli Gardens, one of Kingston's so-called garrisons communities. Politically, homogeneous enclaves under the control of local dance. On May 23rd, after sporadic gun battle throughout Kingston and the burning of police stations, the Jamaican security forces went in hard with armored vehicles and helicopters. They fired martyrs at a residential neighborhood that still had thousands of civilians. At least 73 of women were killed in the operation. Many appear to have been unarmed. People who were rounded up and massacred after the neighborhood was already under control. As I reported for the magazine in December, the U.S. passed intelligence from a department. People, I want you to listen to this now. I want you to listen to this. The U.S. passed intelligence from a department of Homeland Security Surveillance playing to Jamaican forces. The full extent of U.S. involvement in the operation remains unclear. At the center of this mess was the Jamaican's then Prime Minister, Bruce Golden, who also represented Tivoli Gardens as a member of parliament. Golden spent months delaying the extradition. Then good conduct extradition request. His party hired a Washington law firm to lobby against it. Golden has maintained that he was acting on principle and that the wiretap evidence used by the US to indict Cook was illegal under Jamaican law as a crime to him. But many people have argued that Cook had the influence over Golden and that the Jamaica was on the verge of becoming a narco state. Hardly Lewin, the former head of Jamaica military, has suggested that when the extradition request finally went through, Golden administration, people listen to this, you know, this is the prime minister, you know, Golden administration leaked the news to Cook. People don't hear that. The prime minister administration leaked 
the news to cook, leak the information to the criminal, giving him time to muster his forces. When we hear that, people, Golden resigned from office in October 2011. So, what do you think as to why Golden has to resign is because of this situation. I made several attempts to reach him while reporting the original story and did not receive a response. I sent Golden an email when I returned to Jamaica early this summer and was surprised when he agreed to an interview. This is the first public comment on the killing since leaving office. We spoke for about an hour in his living room over glasses of juice from the Bombay mango trees that shared his home in the hills of Kingston. The interview has been edited for length and clarity and one question and answer come from a follow-up email. Do you feel that like anything went wrong during the operation to arrest Cook? Right? The interviewer asks, difficult to say, a large number of persons were killed and it is evident to me that some of those persons that were killed were not themselves gunmen. We're not confronting the security forces. How oh, many of 73 killed fall in that category as distinct from those who were engaging the police in armed confrontation? Because that happened too, there are reports from residents with whom I spoke that some of the persons who were killed were murdered in cold-blooded fashion. I visited a house, for example, where the mother lost two sons. You might have been to that house too. She took me in the room and showed me where they were put to kneel down. So there was enough in terms of what I was told and what I saw to suggest that an in-depth investigation was necessary. The US government has repeatedly said that this was a Jamaican operation conducted by Jamaican security forces. Is that statement accurate? I requested that the US authorities provide us with area surveillance what I had in mind at that time were satellite images of what was happening on the ground. I didn't get into the technical details. I simply asked the US ambassador whether our government would be able to provide some aerial intelligence that wouldn't, would assist the security forces in managing the operation. Were there US personnel on the ground in Tivoli Gardens during the operation? The interviewer asked. No. Um, golden response. I was never told that they were there. I have no such knowledge. What kind of reports were you getting as prime minister from the ground as this whole thing was under the way? The interviewer asked. Um, um, Bruce Golden responds. I would get regular reports from the security forces. I would get a daily written brief in terms of what was happening on the ground, what success they were achieving, what difficulties they were encountering. The question, do you have a sense of what their rules of engagement were or what their parameters were going in? No, that was an operational matter over which by law I have no authority or jurisdiction. But this was a pretty serious and historical operation. It was, it was, responded um, Bruce Golden. As Prime Minister, did you involve yourself in the details of it all? Then the security forces are subject to the rules and the law and the arm of the constitution. And therefore, if I carry out the operation, something is done which is contrary to law, which is in violation of human rights, then they are held accountable. We don't know what will come of the public defender's inquiry. I am surprised that it has not been submitted. When that is submitted, he may very well refer a copy of that to the director of the public prosecution to be tabled in parliament and we will have to see from that stage whether there is a basis from which any criminal charges charges should be laid what is clear is that the security forces face a serious challenge to the authority of the state so the question during the planning and unfolding of the timbali operation did you hear anything in your updates from the security forces that could shed some light and these many allegations of extrajudicial um, killing. None of the reports or briefing I received from the security forces acknowledge any unlawful or extrajudicial behavior. They would always give the assurance that all 
credible allegations or charges would be promptly and thoroughly investigated, um, Bruce Golden stated. Question. After months of challenging the um, legality of the U.S. request to extradite Co, you abruptly re reversed your position. There has been much speculation in Jamaica about what caused you to change your mind. Can you shed any light on your thinking at that time? I met with the head of security forces on the morning of that Sunday, May 23rd. They indicated to me that their intelligence told them that there was a significant and massive buildup of armory and armed men in the area, not only in Tivoli, but the adjoining area, and that they were muscling up to prevent any attempt by the security forces to enter the area. The security forces recommended to me that to ensure that they can effectively restore law and order, a state of emergency was required. Were you experiencing diplomatic pressure from the US during this time? Well, nothing unusual. I mean, there was a lot of US pressure in the relation to the extradition of Coke. And you for a time were resisting processing the extradition. Yeah, there was that. But there was no pressure in relation to the security forces going into Tivoli Gardens to conduct the operation. Um, no specific interviewer. But at one point, you changed your position and said that the extradition order would be signed and processed. Well, as I turn to Bruce, Bruce, uh, Bruce Gould, what was, what was because the country was in a crisis, the government was in a crisis, and I had to make a decision. I had to decide whether much as I believe that the process that was used was wrong, that it was violation of our laws and our constitution, that it was setting a dangerous president. I felt the broader interest of the country would not be served by stubbornly pursuing that position. So if someone had the perception that your arm was being twisted by the US government during this time, would that perception be wrong? That would be wrong. You hear that? The US made it very clear from the beginning of this Coke issue that the extradition of Coke to the United States was an issue of fundamental importance. Not at the time when the operation in Tivoli took place. They made that clear from the very beginning that they attach great importance to the Coke extradition. As you probably know, we said to them, the process you have used is wrong. There's a provision in our constitution that guarantees the rights to privacy of communication, such as telephone calls. Parliament passed a law that allows the right to be abridged, providing certain things are satisfied. There must be a reasonable suspicion that it is necessary in the interest of the public safety, the pursuit of criminals, and so on. But Parliament was so cautious in allowing that right to be abridged that Parliament said, before you can do that, you must go to a judge of the Supreme Court present your case and get the judge to authorize it. So your argument was procedural. We said to the United States, these are violations that we have taken place. We cannot abide these violations. We will hold the extradition request. We are not going to refuse it. We will hold it. We simply ask you to send a new request that is in conformity with our laws and our constitution. For a year, we kept putting that to the US authorities and the US was stone deaf. They were not prepared to countenance any suggestion that the process was wrong. They were not prepared to countenance anything other than let us have coke. That was their position. No, I thought it was wrong. I thought it was bullying of a country. And I, I was in a difficult position because coke was connected with my constituency and my party. That must have made things especially challenging. If Coke was not connected to West Kingston, if Coke was from some other community, and if Coke was not connected as a supporter of the Jamaica Labour Party, I don't think we would have had this problem because Jamaica has in the past refused requests for extradition on technical grounds. So we would not have had this problem. We had this problem because of that connection. And my difficult position was, oh, do you credibly say to people, I am standing on principle. I am standing on our constitution. I am standing on our laws, which my court oath requires me um, to faithfully unhold. 
without people being cynical and saying, hey, you are doing this because this person is connected. And then the big mistake that we made was engaging the Washington law firm, right? It came from a contributory to Jamaica Labor Party. But which contributory? Now that I wouldn't disclose, I don't want to expose that contributor to be in disparage, disparage, because when that contributor was making that contribution, that contributor didn't even know what it was being contributed for. Just a long-standing contributor to the party who was approached by the party finance people, and they are agreed to make this um, situation. Right, let us go, um, go down to here. Um, right, because this is taking a whole long time to read. Right, um, let us, okay. Let us, um, okay, so put away that document. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, so people, era of a government, and let me explain what happened. The previous government, right, which, which was the People's National Party, right, and the United States had an agreement, right, as it relates to certain extradition process and certain things. So now, the situation arises where Bruce Golden became the Prime Minister. And the United States want to extradite Cook. And even although it was put in law by the previous government, Bruce Golden was executing delayed tactics, delayed tactics. The fundamental thing of this information as it relates to the corruption is that the United States communicated information, critical information, right, to the Prime Minister. And the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister himself, let me say this in the document, the Prime Minister himself passed on the information to Cook, Bruce Golden, while dealing with the United States intelligence and the United States handing over intelligence to the Prime Minister, trust the Prime Minister, handing over the intelligence to the Prime Minister, what the Prime Minister did? The Prime Minister passed on the information to do those cook. That is highly corrupted. And that is the fundamental thing that caused him to debate his office. And a level of corruption of that. Right? So what sort of association Bruce Golden could have with what we call dance that the previous government had a treaty passed in law and where you think that you want to disobey and only that you have disobeyed and utilizing the late tactics that the Jamaica Labour Party loves to use but you the Prime Minister you Bruce Collin pass on the information that the Homeland Security shared with you to do the scope, you do, you done it. You, the Prime Minister. So this is where Jamaica hit the highest as it relates to the most corrupted in the history of Jamaica under Bruce Golden. Fitting and the World Corruption Index under Bruce Golden. All right. So that is that. Let us look what's trending now. Now, people, I am going to speak on an issue that happened in 2015. If you see, I have a food basket there. They're going to get into the food basket tonight. And what the Prime Minister had done, let me explain it to the people, as it relates to 2015, I'm going to play it 
in the parliament and show you what the prime minister have done. But it seems like many Jamaicans, right, for somehow seems to miss the point. Let me say this. The person who put this food basket are persons who put this food basket strategy, strategy together, right? They were just naturally evils. So let me explain to the people before I go through and so that then the people can see the clip um, after. What the Prime Minister did in 2015 is totally deceived the Jamaican public. I have the evidence and I'm going to show you. The Prime Minister in 2015 displaying a basket size that capture three years, 2011, 2012, 2015, and used the minimum wage, right, as $3,000 to show you that over the three years period, how inflation had decreased that basket size. So I want people to understand where I'm going with this. The prime minister had lied to the Jamaicans. First thing I want to tell the Jamaican people is that the 3,000 minimum wage that the Prime Minister used to trick the people was lie, was fabricated. The 2012, um, where he still maintained the 3,000, again, was lie and fabricated. The 2015 3,000 that he used to measure the wave of inflation as though it reduced the basket size again was lied. And I'm going to prove it to the Jamaican people. Without any further ado, I am going to play the clip for the parliament for you to see him when he was displaying the information. You understand where he deceived the entire Jamaican people. Without any further ado, let us play that clip. majority of Jamaica. We have been to the markets and the corner shops. We have been to the hospitals. We have been to the churches. And we have been on the buses. We have been all over the island. And the universal private people is, it is not working. Mr. Speaker, let us be clear. It is a good thing to pass the IMF test. However, the government must also pass the growth test. The passing of the IMF test alone will only mean more pain and pressure for the people of Jamaica. Mr. Speaker, if the Minister of Finance doesn't pass the growth test, then he puts in danger the passage of future IMF tests. If he doesn't pass the growth, the growth test, then, Mr. Speaker, it means that you will have to take the tax test. If he doesn't pass the growth test, Mr. Speaker, then the food basket of the people of Jamaica will get smaller and smaller. Mr. Speaker, since the government has been in power, the Jamaican dollar has lost 34% of its value. Prices of basic food items have increased, some by over 100%. In 2013, we brought the Jamaica Food Basket Parliament to show just how much things have changed since the government came to power in 2012. We demonstrated at that time that Jamaicans were suffering due to the effect of devaluation 
and a sharp erosion in their purchasing power. I thought it useful, Mr. Speaker, to compare the basket of food, the basket of goods. <laughs> don't, don't worry. The, the, don't worry. The, the, the basket, very light. Very light. <laughs> I thought it a useful exercise to compare the basket of goods a fixed weekly minimum wage earner could actually purchase with $3,000 in 2011, 2013, and now today, Mr. Speaker. This is the, this this Mr. Speaker is the this is the 2011 basket. Look. In the 2011 basket, Mr. Speaker, you could buy an entire loaf of bread. You could buy corn beef. Right? You could buy lactogen, baby food, and you could buy baby diapers. You could buy, Mr. Speaker, a full bottle of oil. Right? No, oh, and of course, you know, I, I don't know if you like selfish Prime Minister, but, but I love it. And you could buy saltfish. Oh, oh, and, and, and hold on, you know, you could buy. Oh, and look about rice. Look about rice. It's so much Condensed milk. So hold on, you know. Look, look here, now, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this is the basket in 2012. Half a bread. Half a bread. You, you can still get nothing but only two. You can still get little baby feed but only one. Where's the rice? You remember the picture of Bondi? You can't get that again. This is where I have to buy. You don't want 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 Small bottle of cooking oil. That's it. The 2012. Now look at this one, now, Mr. Speaker. Look at this, Mr. Speaker. This is the 2015. 2015. This is 2015. This, Mr. Speaker, is 2015. This has no upscale or curry goat. This is the reality of the People's National Party government and the backs of Jamaica. All right, take the third no, we'll have a This is what you can get what I'm ready. in Jamaica now. You, you, you can still get that thing out. 
you get one tin of sardine, you can only get one tin of mackerel. <laughs> one bowl of flour, bowl of rice. Take it away. All right. Take that away. Let me talk to my people now because we are going to present the 2024 basket, food basket that Andrew Wallace demonstrated on Little Me. I know that you have some mathematician out there, so let me set the record straight. I don't want when I am using my denominator as it relates to the $3,000 that he used, people are going to say, Byron, no, use it as it relates to the current minimum wage, $13,000. No, I'm not going to use it. I'm not going to use it. I am going to do... I am going to do what he had done. And people, I'm going to tell you why I am not going to use it. Because Andrew Holness lied. And Andrew Holness was not fair when he was talking about the minimum wage. Now, one of the first lie that Andrew Holness displayed, and that's why you people have to understand the type of prime minister that we have. is a diabolical liar. So let me... Break up, scumble the first lie. The first lie when he displayed the 2011 um, food basket using the denominator, the minimum wage as $3,000. That was a lie. The minimum wage was not $3,000. Without any further ado, let me present the document and show the evidence where Andrew Holness totally lied to the Jamaican people. Without any further ado, bring up that document. Let us show Jamaican people what Andrew Wallace did. So let us read the full story. The new national minimum wage of $5,000 per 40-hour work week takes effect Today, September 3, 2012. Right? Now, the 11% increase in the minimum wage is as a result of recommendations from the Minimum Wage Advisory Commission. Minister of Labor of Social Armed Security, Minister Honorable Derek Kelly, had announced during his contribution to the 2012 and 13 sectoral debates in Garden House in July that the minimum wage will move from 4,500. So in 2011, which would represent that to 5,000 per 40 hour work week. So there is the evidence, take it away, to show you that Andrew Holness lied when he used the three thousand dollars minimum wage, evidence, evidence, evidence. Andrew, you're a liar, and you'll deceive the entire Jamaican people. So then, for Andrew Holness to be telling the truth in displaying that basket, right, should utilize the minimum wage of four thousand five hundred dollar, which mean that basket would have more items. Now, Andrew Onet, again, right, used the 2015 basket, also carried the $3,000 in 2015. 
in 2015, right? Let us put up a document and show you what that minimum wage would be. Okay. So then, recently announced increase in the national minimum wage and the minimum wage for industrial security guards will come in effect tomorrow, Tuesday, March 1, 2006. The national minimum wage will be increased from 5,600 to 6,200 per 40 hour per week, right? Arising from this, the new hourly rate for the national minimum wage is $155. The time and a half rate is $232.50, and the double time rate will be increased to $310. Yes. So recently announced increase in national minimum wage and the minimum wage, right, for industrial security guards will um, come into effect tomorrow, Tuesday, March 2006. The national minimum wage, here it is, people. The national minimum wage will be increased from 5600 to 6,200 per 40 hour work week, the national minimum wage. Take that um, document away. People, there is the precise evidence that the 2015, when he carried across the $3,000, should have been $5,600. It's to show you that this man. To please himself, even when people could afford more, right? He was critiquing the motion in, in a negative way and the worst way to bring down a government that was doing good. To bring down a government that was doing good. Now, and that's why me now pity him and use any form of 13,000 minimum wage that him, that him writes. I am going to do what he had done with the People's National Party, bringing the $3,000 across the three years, 2011, 2012, 2015. So I don't know why you're not a mathematician to run up in my chat and I talk about me they use um, um, a wrong figure. Me no, so I use a wrong figure. I'm matching uppers with uppers as it relates to Andrew Owens doing the very same thing. So now I'm going to bring back the $3,000. So, mommy, send me a shot. Send me a shot, mommy. I'm going to show the whole people the 2024 food basket. So, mommy, send me a shot. Send me a shot. Okay, Baron, I have $3,000. Yes. Left out of the money that you gave me. All right. So, I need you to go to the shop. And okay. I need to get to Lactogen. Because yes. Only one um, feed me can make out of the lactogen or leave another bottle. Okay, mommy. Some diaper because me don't want one diaper. Okay. Me need a pound of flour. Okay. One small tin of mackerel. Okay. A pound of sugar. Okay. All right. And when you come back, just yes. tap on Miss Jenna asks her for two lines for me. Okay. And you, want, you, you want quarter bread because you know, Oh, oh, yeah. Quarter yeah, bread. Quarter bread. So if you can buy quarter bread, care come. Yeah, and I look at stretch a two piece. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Get, get some toothpaste here. All right. So, people, may I go shop? Me soon come back. Moms, give me three thousand dollar. May I go shop? You understand? For buy all our moms, send me for my boy. So, me soon come back, people. Hold on. Yeah, paper. Well, come back from shopping. Come back picking up. Boy, it's rough. Paper, 2024 basket, rough. Moms, you know what? We have to cater for the baby. You know? So, what the food the woman tell us about? What we're going to eat? 3,000 dollars can't catch that. 3,000 dollars can't buy none of that. So, I have to prepare for the baby. Because you know, say we have parents, we have to prepare for the little baby. So, I have to buy the few pumpers. Right? And six months, I couldn't get, get mommy there and for three thousand dollars. I want lactogen. So what we are gonna eat? I don't know where we go. Eat. We can't mix it with sugar. If, if not sugar, be there. I will go and see the people. Lactogen. 
You know what? We're going to just prepare this and show something from you look up and pay money. Can't can buy no food. And you all this 2024 food basket. No food not in there. No food not in there. Empty. Baby. I may have to breastfeed. You look at Dr. Jen. I'll have to care breastfeed. for the baby. <laughs> you look at Pampas. Andrew Wallace, 2024 food basket. So, people. We check the prices, Janet. We make sure we check the, we check the prices. Check the Everything that he had in the basket. We call down there and check we the call prices. We check the prices. Right, the lactogen. Right, I mean, you have to buy cheap lactogen, is $2,100. Anybody can check it out. And so, then it never enough to buy the full case of pampas. So, I have to add about six single pampas, and that may get for three thousand dollars. A money done. The three thousand dollar done, no food, and this is Andrew Owners led government. This show you how inflation, right? Eat out the whole of the basket, eat out the whole of the basket. No food, no day in the basket, and this is what several Jamaicans are facing today. Basket empty, no food, right? Because we can't make the baby so fine. We as the adult, we have to take care of the baby. But remember that the, the, the mother has right? to eat in America. She has to breastfeed in well, the Well, Mr. Fiona, I'm going to breastfeed. I'm going to eat anything to make a produce milk. But I'm going to know. Three thousand dollars done. Now, I want to show you. <laughs> To show you how the Jamaica Labour Party desperate. And that is welcome to prosperity. No bread. The 2015 that Andrew displayed in the basket of at least quarter bread. Have a look at troops of eye. Right? As I look at troops of starfish. You understand that? Sir? And so then, see the 2024 year. Not knowing that. Baron, me a spit a brown. <laughs> you make it dry before you come back. No, not knowing that. Not knowing at the basket. She meant too much good. I was telling you to too much. I meant too you know much good. <laughs> you telling me. <laughs> Money done, 3,000 done, rub out. Right? And I don't want people to say, okay, Baron, okay, you're not fair because you didn't use the um, the minimum wage, which is $13,000. Andrew Wellness was not fair. He did not use the appropriate minimum wage. So don't tell me about fairness when you're not telling Andrew Wellness about fairness. He, he was not fair. All right. So then, let me show you something how we catch Andrew Wellness in a desperate situation, which part of them claims they do road. You understand that? You know, the rub little um, barber, barber green space on the road and a mall the road. Let me tell you what Andrew only said about those type of situation. Without any further ado, honey, let us play the script. This voice. Oh. The hundred million US dollars. Oh, I'm over it too. Sorry, guys. All right, wifey is trying to find that um, clip for you. Yes. So it's important that people of Jamaica understand that it's not just about putting a sheet of asphalt over the road. When we say we're going to repair the roads, we have to think about drains. No, we, have, we have to lay pipelines. No, we have to, to, to think about water flow. 
So it, it's it's a very complicated issue. Great again and let the people hear it again. It's important that the people of Jamaica understand that it's not just about putting a sheet of asphalt over the road. When we say we're going to repair the roads, we have to think about drains. No, we, have, we have to lay pipelines. No, we have to, to, to think about water flow. So it, it's it's a very complicated issue. Okay, Jamaica. You hear what the Prime Minister said? That it is not about just <laughs> we have people talking about fixing roads. He has to consider that he has to think about drainage system to put in proper drainage system, right? So that the water can be able to run freely and don't create any form of surface damages. The Prime Minister knows this, but yet now in the heave of a political season, look what the Prime Minister, right? And members of parliament um, doing, right? In terms of seeking vote. Without any further ado, look at this. The very same thing, you know, the Prime Minister is saying, to do it properly, you have to put in drains, pipelines, and so forth. You understand? So the Prime Minister know very well what it takes to construct the road properly. Now, look at this. Look at this image stick here. Now, without any further ado, please. Uh, One second. We're coming up. We're coming up, guys. Um, let me see. Let me see. Uh, we're coming up. We're coming up, guys. This one. Yeah. Just a title of your story. So, so just look at this. How you feel when them tell you, say, it will never happen, but you're seeing it happening in front of your own, own eyes. How you feel when your government knows, say, that road have been fixed because prosperity has to be for all of us. Here in Johnstown, and a couple of years ago, we did the entire anchovy road in the scheme, all the way up here. There's a little part missing, and thanks to the $40 million patching, we are here now, fixing the last little bad spot here, done so. So, could that, let me ask Mrs. Vaz a question. <laughs> I want to ask Ms. Vaz. Ms. Vaz, this question is for you. Based on what the Prime Minister just said, right? That good road structure required proper drainage, proper pipeline, right? To be utilized. Where is the drainage? In, the, in that road that you are displaying. Right? Where is the proper pipeline? Where is all of that? That in your desperation, that you are seeking, right, to just fling some mud and fling some surface barba green on the road, and then a good show of rain, it mash up back, and then the amount of money, you understand it cars to do that. So this goes to show your people that I want you to see these things in terms of what Andrew Wholeness just said, that it need proper drainage and the night and day of what Mrs. Vaz is doing, right? Inconsistencies. And so then when you see this, this is a government that we are tired of. The lies, the scheming, and the list 
goes on, right? In order to seek vote. But not only that, look what is happening in other residents that this government is paying no care to. You don't think they don't do it. Let's get it. We are treated as if we are at the back. No road, no, no board. board. The residents have blocked the road, which is causing a disruption to school and to, to people going to work. But it is a needed protest. I'm asking them to just abide by the law, but the roads have been so bad, so the residents are crying out for help. The MTA, I know, has allocated money to NWA from, two, from 2022 to fix the road, and until today, nothing has been taking place. Nothing is nothing is taking place. So we are asking the authorities to come and sort it up. This also, the residents can go to school, so that the children can go to school, so residents can go to work, because this is a bad situation right now. There is other country which is true, but this is the front of the country. We are at the front of the country, but we are treated as if we are at the back. No road, no, no board. board. Right. right. This is this is what we we've been driving, driving on. We driving on an abandoned river. Look at it, people. Look at it. Right through and through from where to Grange, come to Hartford Pass Road. Every day we've been spending. The money that we make, is, it is no use for us in our pocket or in our saving. It is going back on the vehicle. And that makes no sense. Transport authorities on us and the police is on us. Examiner. Every day, examiner every day. When we bring the vehicle to, to the depot, it pass me over and over. Every time it pass me. So we need some just justice. Something need to be served here for us. So this morning, so Monday this morning, morning you, you have withdrawn yes, your yeah, taxi we service. Our service and the members of the citizen, we are joined with all of us taxmen because they are facing the problem just like me. The one who can't even jump up at all. Look at this. Look how big is this. We can't even jump because of afraid to slide. Look at this thing here. This is bad. This is not very good for us. This is not healthy for the people that are here. Look, look over there. Look. This is not healthy. This, 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 this is a way big disgrace. Look at it. Dear you go, my people. Can I close the crowd? Dear you go, my people. That is what prosperity looks like for the Jamaica Labour Party. That is what prosperity look like for Mrs. Darrell Voss, for Mrs. Voss. That is what prosperity looks like. Now, uh, my last clip for tonight, um, Earth Chaba, destruction, destruction will call the election and you will see <laughs> destruction, megawatt, blessings. But um, Earth Chaba, are you saying? What else can I say? Miss um, Miss Oz, please let the people know the truth about Devon Heartless, that unscrupulous, uncaring punk MS. Please let the people know the truth. Bless up this program and bless up um, yourself. Um, okay, all right. Um, we are going to take a look into that. Right? Um, all right. Yeah. Okay. So um let us um get into the final clip for tonight. Um police investigation into plane crash. So we're going to look into the final clip for tonight and then I hand over to Jeopardy. I love a police investigation. Up first, a high-level multi-agency investigation is underway to determine the circumstances which led to a twin-engine small aircraft crash landing in deep rural St. Elizabeth Friday evening. The police are also searching for the occupant or occupants of the aircraft as well as its contents. 
a reporter doing earnestness in St. Elizabeth and visited the crash site. This is freshly disturbed soil. The theory is that the aircraft was trying to make a landing here sometime last evening. Now, based on what the police have said, they recovered some lights from these two bamboo markers. Now, these two bamboo markers would have had the lights on them, signaling to whatever aircraft trying to land that this is the area that you can safely land. But as I indicated earlier, this disturbed area of soil is where the aircraft appeared to have landed, indicating that it missed its marker. We were alerted to the information that a plane may have experienced some amount of difficulty and went down somewhere in the Marash area of Bray's River. An immediate search and rescue operation was launched. The various agencies were contacted to include the fire brigade and the military. It took about three hours where the wreckage of what appeared to be a two-engine plane was found in this area. The aircraft has been totally destroyed. It remains to be seen what investigators will be able to salvage from this wreckage to help their investigation. Even from our untrained eyes, we're not able to see a lot. In fact, the only thing we're able to make out is this. No to car. It's Spanish. It means do not touch, suggesting that maybe this aircraft has something to do with Central or South America. There's an active investigation ongoing. No person was found. Uh, no other items except for the burnt remains of the plane. And therefore, like I said, this investigation will expand beyond the St. Elizabeth Police. We have already made contact with other agencies to determine the, uh, the origin of, of the aircraft, as also to broaden the investigation to try and establish why this aircraft would have been here. The investigation is active at this time, and therefore will allow the various agencies and the police to conduct a full and thorough investigation. A strong smell of smoke hugs this entire area, and that adds to the intrigue around this aircraft. Did the occupants light the aircraft after exiting, or did the aircraft burst into flames based on the distress it experienced while attempting to land here? It's just some of the many questions investigators will have to try and answer in the coming days. Police officers continue to patrol the area. They've been doing so from about 7 p.m. last evening when the first alert was made that an aircraft was in distress in this general area. Now, when they got here, they obviously saw no one. Now, incidentally, to get to this particular area, it will take you about an hour from the main road in Braze River. Now, the closest hospital to this area is about two hours away in Black River, which begs the question, if someone was aboard the aircraft based on the damage done to the aircraft, would they have suffered any injuries and are they in need of medical treatment? One theory is that they were assisted from the site. We are not sure as to whether or not it was a difficulty the, the pilot experienced or whether or not they, uh, the, there was an attempt to land it in this area. There is certainly a history surrounding this particular area. Um, there are a number of theories floating around, uh, one of which is that the, the plane was, was attempting to land. And so we will allow the experts and the various forensic persons to do their checks and, and their investigations, and then a more conclusive uh, determination can be made. Three years ago, in January 2021, a similar aircraft crash landed in Rocky Point in Clarendon, which is not far from here. Now, three years later, another aircraft crashed along the south coast of Jamaica, which raises the question, what sort of trade is happening on the south coast of Jamaica? Reporting from Braes River in St. Elizabeth, I'm Dwayne Anderson for TVJ News. Okay, all right. People, leave up um, Deborah Cohen um, thing there. Um, here, here it is. Just leave it. Oh, oh, okay. And if you notice what Deborah has up there, because there are two things that we're going to talk about tonight. And this goes to the level of corruption. 
powerful. Right? Now, the, the more I speak about black box, which when you have a crash site, whether on land or in water, one of the first instrument that you want to retrieve, right, is the black box. The black box, right, is the central system that records, right, all communication. Where the black box can tell you, right, whether the plane was in distress, the communication from the pilot, and so forth. The back, the, the back box, the back box, the black box can give you a background, right, of all the developed happenings that took place with this aircraft. Now, and all the crashes that happen in Jamaica, no one seems to be talking about the retrieving of the black box. And where, right? The, the efficient people who need to investigate these crash sites, right? Because it, it takes special skill as it relates to that level of investigation when you are dealing with um, a crash a, um, a crash site. Not ordinary police, you understand, do that investigation. You understand, you have to have a um, special skill set in terms of that. So then, apart from the black box, the next thing that I want to speak about is the control tower and Jamaica airspace. That, how are we going to protect our airspace if you have an identified object entering our airspace? And as I said, an identified object where we can't get no form of identity from that aircraft. Um, and the, uh, this is not a first for this era. Exactly. Right? And so then, is this craft, aircraft, comes into our airspace unidentified so that it can go to a particular location, whether it was a deliberate crash, right? Or whatever happened. But we have no form of information as it relates to that, play, that, that aircraft entering in our airspace. Now, this doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. And we talk about the systematic corruption. Now, when I look at it, I am curious. I am curious as it relates to what were the items of the aircraft, because we see the aircraft burn up, right? And that is why I am curious. And it seems as if, from the look of things, right, no one being found, and the contents of the aircraft is unknown. Right? So the question that I'm asking, was the aircraft carrying drugs? Was the aircraft carrying guns? Was the aircraft carrying bombs? Pipe bombs? Because we have seen where 320 pipe bombs found and then we have no word of it. We know for sure that we have local government just right around the corner. What is happening in Jamaica? Huh? Look how the police tampering the crash scene before the forensic team arrive. Look on that perfect arm, arm earth. Right? Now, when you have a plane crash site, it carry special investigators who equipped and have the experience, you understand, to investigate, right, 
those um cross sites when it comes to um aircraft. I don't know, like you know, um, I mean, ordinary police monitoring that. That's strange to me. Anywhere you have um cross sites as it relates to might be a first world country and wherever black special people go in and do those investigations. Um, um, Carl Gale, they're not talking about the black box because they think everyone in Jamaica does it. Them can't fool people again. You fool some people sometimes, but you can't fool all the people all the time. Exactly. Right? And all these crash, um, crash plane crash, right, that followed before that, this one, right? Nothing about the black boxes. Not a word. Not a word about these black boxes. Which is a critical source of information where you can be updated as it relates to the development of what happened to the aircraft. You can find out from the black box whether the pilot was in distress, whatever signal being sent, whatever communication being made. So then now we are doing investigation. And we now hear nothing about no black box. Eh? We are not hearing anything about black box. The pivotal instrument that can give us some assistance, great assistance to the investigation. That seems to be missing. Might be conveniently. Might be conveniently because the black box make with certain type of material that also can be protected from serious impact, whether fire or any sort of force. The, the black box material, right, is built a way to protect, you understand, from that sort of damage to the black box. And so then, but once you retrieve the black box, right, you can get critical information. Um, and yeah. Um, that, that side requires special intelligence from persons who are equipped for those incidents. Yes, India, we are a fool. We are a fool now. You understand? We are here to ask the appropriate questions. What do you have, right, the regular police on a plane trust side investigate, investigating what? Huh? That don't make no sense. And then you see a particular pattern exist as it relates to other planes that have been crashed, right? I mean, within the same location. That doesn't make any sense, people. And so then here is the authority, Jamaican authority. What are they telling us? What are they saying? So when we talk about the level of corruption, here we have it, sir. Where I showed a document previously where the United States Homeland Security communicated to the Jamaican Prime Minister in 2009, giving the Prime Minister intelligence, you understand, on the criminal network and what the Prime Minister do. What did the Prime Minister do? The Prime Minister himself called the criminal and tell the criminal everything. My, my, this is serious. You have intelligence from the United States homeland as it relates to criminal work in Jamaica. And because this man in your constituency, right? You as a prime minister, automatically align yourself with the criminal and not only that you align yourself with the criminal passing on critical information that was communicated to you you pass it on to the criminal this is the type of jamaica and see we have the same government in power right so many drug busts and you can't hear no follow-up 
Jenny, our national security is threatened. We are not safe. Of course, our national security is threatened. What I'm saying, when you look on where you can have aircraft, right, just venture into our airspace, right, without we knowing, is that, is that what, no, I want to find out if this is what the Jamaican authority is telling us. I want to find out if this is, I mean, come on, this is crazy. So an excellent point. They knew where they were going and did not take any expert investigators with them. Just look at that. Look at that. Are we stupid? Right? Are we stupid? What happened to the black boxes? To provide the necessary information. Right? Are we that stupid? So then, this is the type of government that we are dealing with. This is the type of government we are dealing with. So as I said, that is my last clip. And we are going to welcome Jeopardy. Right? I want to say a big thanks for all the people who pass through. Right? And so forth. Um, India says so true, Byron. Bless up India. Right? It doesn't make any sense. Right? Plain venture into our air space. Right? We have no form of communication with them. Right? It's just madness. Unbelievable. Why are they bent on destroying our country? Are they thinking all of us are, are dumb? Seriously. Right? Bless up yourself, wellness warrior. Right? It just, it just doesn't make any sense. Right? That a plane can now venture into our air space and you understand? I mean, come on. Come on. Those people are told. What, what, what are you saying to us? Right? You mean the criminal PM? <laughs> exactly. Right? Daniel Taylor, Jamaica has been running like Chicago during the years of the mafias like Babyface Nelson, <coughs> Machine Gun Kelly. Right? With Eliotness, Eliotness, and their case, you understand. And remember Dillinger, because Dillinger used to run along with those people as well, right? So this is this is this is this is madness. This is totally madness, right? So, wifey, I'm handing over to you as it relates to Jeffrey. I'm just gonna open the right. One. Oh, okay. Right. Okay, guys, for the number streaming across <clears throat> the screen, I'm just going to drop it in the chat so the phone line is open for anyone who wants to call it in. Uh, let me get it from this device. Anyone who wants to call in, you can do so at this time. Right, so the number is in the chat. I am also going to just go ahead and pin it on top. There we go. And it's a WhatsApp number. So if you want to call in, feel free um, to do so. The line is open at this time. Okay. All right. Um, let me just put it and say what it was. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, Daniel. Happy Friday. Thank you so much for joining in. All right, so let's take that down. All right, so thank you so much. Um, I don't know who the pilot and the name of them. Simon de Poor. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, Colleen. Happy Friday. Thank you so much for Jamaica, joining. Jamaican fear a lot of mercy on us on a joke. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for that insightful and informative, informative discussion as usual, Byron. Really thank appreciate you. it. And I know you always put a lot of work into doing your research and make sure you try to present um, the facts and um, Make sure that whatever you're saying, it's not really opinionated. You back it up with articles and exactly. stuff. 
and use their own words um, in bringing um, across their point. So really appreciate the extensive work that you put in each week. All right, guys, and thank you so much for tuning in. And thank you so much for your contribution to the discussion. Really appreciate each and every one. And as I keep saying it, I know you could have been doing something else on um, for your Friday night and you chose to be with us, but we do not take that for granted. Goga, welcome, welcome. Blessings. Happy Saturday to you. Happy New Year to you as well over there in Africa. Really appreciate you tuning in. Yes, it's morning time for you. All right, so guys, um, we are, okay. Um, Debbie, have a wonderful and blessing, Debbie. Says majestic bending. She is the majestic to open her eyes. She wants to sleep. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you. Um, your continued support. So Janet um, commented. If we here. think it hard now, can you imagine if him win again? Jamaica done. Remember me tell her, Janet. No joke. All right, so let me just bring up the Jeopardy template. All right, guys, so we are going to go into Jeopardy and remember that we are playing for credit and um, it's a thousand dollars Jamaican credit to the person with the most points. And then we will have four runners up of five hundred dollars um jamaican dollars credits each um digital or flow and the questions are in the form of a statement you answer in the form of a question so if it's a name of a thing or place is what is and then the answer and if it's the name of a person it is who is and then the answer okay Okay, thank you so much, um, Barbara. Really appreciate your continued support, and you have a wonderful one rest of weekend and a wonderful and productive week. And Karan sort is saying all non-corrupt JLP MP should abandon Kanju on this scan. Exactly. All right, so let me just share the template. Um, let me just take the logo off so you can see. Um, you can see it better there. All right, so tonight's um, categories are former prime ministers, Jamaican dance, Jamaican theater, second drawer, orange book, Jamaican theater, Jamaican civics, and spelling. So you are going to throw out a category and for how many points, and the <clears throat> first one that I see is the one that we're going to start with. Um, so... All right, I see, let me just go on this device here. I see um, Daniel is putting out spelling for 300. So we're gonna start with spelling. And then um, the person who answers the question correctly will choose the next category and so forth and so on until the board is empty. Okay, so give me the correct spelling for the word quieter. Pass me a pen, please. Quieter. What is the correct spelling for the word quieter? So you have options A, B, C, and D. God bless. Welcome, welcome. Happy Friday. Thank you so much for joining in. All right. So let's see. And that's for 300 points. Okay, and I see the answer that I am looking for. So the answer is B, quieter, Q-U-I-E-T-E-R. So the correct um, spelling is B. So let's see who first came in with the correct response. Let me just refresh. Let's see who first came in with the correct response. Okay, started it. Yes, yes, Sonia, it is so cold. I have to go to work. <laughs> Didn't want to crawl out of bed, but yep, minus 38 degrees with a wind chill of minus 42. Came back and was trying to blow snow off the driveway, and my fingers were on fire. 
Okay, so first on the board with the correct response is truck life, and that is for 300 points. So 300 points to truck life. So truck life is on the board. And then God bless um, Janet. Uh, okay, Nardi also, she spelled it out. <laughs> yes, in there, a long time, Daniel. I'm always here. <laughs> Okay, yep. Yeah, um, and there are some crazy calls here. All right, Sonia um also came in with what is B. All right, and that's how the answers came in. So truck life is saying spelling for 100. The correct spelling for the word emptiest. Emptiest. What is the correct spelling? You have four options there, so choose the correct spelling for the word emptiest. Great, let me just catch up with this one. Remember guys, when you're answering, you have to put what is, and then the answer, if it's the name of a person, it's who is, and then the answer. So you have to answer with what is. All right, so I see the answer that I am looking for, and the answer is A E M P T I E S T. That's the correct spelling. So let's see who first came in with the correct response. I'm just going to refresh to see. Truck life. So first on the board with the correct response is truck life. One minute, please. Then 100. Then Danielle. God bless Nardi, Janet, um, Sonia, Janet, um, Sean. That's how the answers came in. So truck life is spelling, same spelling for 200. And cool diva, if you're listening, the um, credit was um, given to Janet. The, the credit that you donated, we gave it to to Janet. So just letting you know um, that it was um, passed on. All right. So truck life is then spelling for 200. All right. So um, trickiest. What is the correct spelling for trickiest? So you have four options there. So choose the correct of the four options. Go, go, you know him have this. Oh, you know him have the cheat sheet. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. I see the answer that I am looking for. And it's option B. Um, T R I C K I E S T. That's the correct spelling, and that is for 200 points. So let's see who first came in with the correct spelling. Muriel, welcome. Let me give up. Hush. Muriel, they have um, alien Wi-Fi and Olympic finger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, all right, let's see who first came in. So truck life. Again? Yep, for 200 points. Mm -hmm. Then Daniel, God bless. That's hard. Um, like um, Empress. A serious Nordy, then Sonia mixing, he spelled it out. Okay, and okay, then he put the letter there. Simone, um, backward, um, need to put what is before the answer. All right, uh, he moved his laptop. All right. So um, that's how the answers came in. 
So truck life is saying spelling for 400. So let's see, spelling for 400. Correct spelling for the word crumier. Crumier. So what is the correct spelling for crumier? From here, down here it gets too hot. Mm. All right, I see the answer that I am looking for, and it is what is A? A, so let's see who, C-R-U-M-M-I-E-R. -M -M -E so let's see who first came in with the correct spelling. So A is the correct response. So first on the board, <laughs> first on the board with the correct response is Daniel for 400 points. Then truck life, God bless. <laughs> Nardi, mixing, Sonia. Okay, don't do that. So Daniel for 400 Simone, points, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the score as it is, Daniel for 400 points and truck life for 600 points. <laughs> then Sean also came in with what is A. Um, okay, all right, so he's saying spelling for 500. Correct spelling for shiniest. Shiniest, what is the correct spelling for shiniest? Correct spelling for shiniest. Welcome, welcome, JD. Happy Friday. I'm late again. Hush. <laughs> Hush, but thank you for tuning in. You're better late than never. Where did it start? Okay, it started there. All right, so I see the correct, I see the answer that I am looking for, and it is what is D, S-H-I-N-I-E-S-T, shiniest. So that is D, so let's see who first came in with the correct response. That was at the target there. What is D? So first on the board with the correct response is Sean for 500. Sean for 500. Then truck life. Mixed in. Nardi. Goga. God bless, Sonia. All right, and that's all the answers came in. Okay, Sean, you need to choose a category and for how many points? Like if you're choosing like former prime minister or Jamaican dance, Jamaican theater, Jamaican civics and put how many points? He's just throwing out and yet one did stick. <laughs> Sean, so what category do you want for the 100? He answered the 400 points for D. Oh, it, it was for the 400? Okay.
Hold on, let me go back up. It's confusing the whole thing. What is these just throwing out? Hold on. Sean, when you're playing, you have to, you can't be throwing um out so many answers for one for the for the same thing because you're confusing the the, the um the result. You're confusing the result because you're pre you throwing out um every every letter that's representing um. The answer and then it is um coming over into the next question where well, you're answering the previous question all right so let me just try and see if i can rectify this one sec let me just go back to where that started okay let's do another two more Okay, you answer for that. Okay. So let's see who first came in with that then. Just bear with me just a minute, guys. Just trying to get it correct here. See who first came in. All right, so it started right there and then he threw that out. Then that. Okay, it came under that, so I'm not sure, so I'm just going to let it stand and then just go to the next category and um, I, with the letters, it cannot be mixed up again with the next category because I'm not sure because he put two just as, under that um, question, so it's hard to say. So let me just see what categories he put here now and then um, go with that. Okay, so we're gonna go with Jamaican Prime Minister for 400. Sorry about that. So that would be the former Prime Minister. And it's a double point answer. So name this prime, former Prime Minister for 400 points. So it would be an 800 point answer. So, So that's the 800 point answer, whoever answered that correctly. So name the former prime minister, uh -huh. 400. Ricardo, welcome, welcome, happy Friday. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, I see the answer that I am looking for, and it is who is you, Shira, and that is for 800 points. So the former prime minister, you, Shira, 800 points. So let's see who first. Mr. Dave, welcome, welcome. Happy Friday. All right, so let's see who first came in with the correct response.
And remember, you have to start with the name of a person. It is who is. All right, so first on the board with the correct response is Ricardo, then Truck Life, then Sonia, Ricardo mm -hmm. for 800 points, then Sonia, God bless, Nordy, sorry, Daniel and Nordy. Um, 800 points, Ricardo? Mm hmm. All right, so Ricardo is in theatre for one for one hundred. I try to speed it up. Um, name Jamaica's first ever broadcasting commission. Name Jamaica's first ever broadcasting commission. All right, so what is JBC or Jamaica Broadcasting Corporation? So that's the correct answer, and that's it for 100 points. Oh, okay. so let's see who, for, who came in with the response. So the score as it is uh, Daniel on 400 points, Sean on 500 points, Shock Life on 600 points, Ricardo 800 points. Okay, they're saying the board is blurry. I guess the internet. Okay, sorry, the signal must have gone a bit weak when that happened. But it's better now. All right, so first on the board with the correct response is Truck Life. Then Andrew. Welcome, welcome, Andrew. Happy Friday. Thank you so much for joining in. Then Nordy mixing. Um, go back at JBC. Whoa, <laughs> next thing is that it's out. Then India, God bless Colin. Colin, welcome, welcome. You have to put what is and then the answer. Sean also got JBC. Um, <laughs> Jacqueline, welcome, welcome. Happy Friday. Thank you so much for tuning in. All right, so choose the next category and for how many points? Oh, he's saying prime ministers for 100. Okay, so name this former prime minister. Everybody run out. All right, I see the answer that I am looking for, and it is who is Portia Simpson Miller, and that is for 100 points. So let's see who first came in with the correct response. All right, so first on the board with the correct response is God bless. Sorry, Daniel, you know the rules. You need to write out the full name. Um, God so bless. that is 100 points, yes. 100 for God bless. Yes, then Truck Life, um, Ricardo, then Andrew, Nordy, she left off the middle, then Sonia. Moriel also came in with that. 
All right, choose the next category and for how many points? God bless theater for 200. This artist sung the hit single, Wonderful World, Beautiful People, name the artist. This artist sung the hit single, Wonderful World, Beautiful People. And that is for 200 points. Welcome, welcome, Teacher P. Happy Friday. Thank you so much for joining in. Hope you had a wonderful week. Sean, your internet is lagging. You need to refresh. Notifications of the door stop allowing. You're welcome, Teacher P. And you're welcome, welcome. Happy Friday. Thank you so much for tuning in. All right. So let's see. All right. I see the answer that I am looking for. And remember, the name of a person is who is. So who is Jimmy Cliff? And that is for 200 points. So let's see who picked up those 200 points. So first on the board with the correct response is Nordy for 200 points, who is Jimmy Cliff, then Megaphone, but he didn't put who is, then God bless, Ricardo, um, Muriel, Daniel. Nordy for how much? 200. All right, you're welcome, um, Andrew. All right, so let's see. So choose the next category and for how many points, Nardi? <laughs> oh, Nardi said, what is, hold on, let me go back up. Jesus. Oh, sorry. Yes, she said, what is sorry? So it's God bless. Sorry, Nardi said, what is not who is? So it's God bless 200 points. Sorry, Nardi. Thanks for um noticing that. That's a correction. Okay. Yeah, you have to make sure when it's the name of a person, it is who is and... um name of a place or thing it is what is so choose the next category and for how many points so the score as it is god bless on 300 points daniel 400 points sean 500 points truck life 600 points ricardo 800 points thank you so much um thank you so much google i really appreciate that thank you <laughs> 100k is on <laughs> Thank you, Google. I really appreciate that. Okay, God bless is saying theater for 300. All right, name the play the image was taken from. So name the play that the image was taken from. Everybody run out. Name the play that the image was taken from. Everybody run out. The play, name the play. Not the character, name the play. <laughs> I 
Megawatt. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much for still being here, Jamfet. I know it's late over there in front. Really appreciate you still being here. Better myself, Jamfet. <laughs> All right. Um, I see. Oh, my goodness. All right. I see the answer that I am looking for. Um, let me just reveal. And it is, what is Bashment Granny? So that's Shibata from Bashment Granny, and that's for 300 points. All right, let's. All right, so it started there. Hmm. All right, so first on the board with the correct response is. Okay, corrected it. Ricardo, basement granny, because he has basement granny. Then, um, God bless also put basement, basement, what is, ba what is basement granny? Hold on. It just goes down. God bless. All right, so no, first on the board, I'm going to give it to Bashment because I'm going to give it to God bless because I know it's Bashment Granny was typing it. So the, the phone or the keyboard must have changed it to um, Basement. Wait, wait, wait. No, so it would have to be Ricardo. So Ricardo. Mm -hmm. um, please type out and change this. How many points? 300. So Ricardo, Bashment Granny. Then we have, so Ricardo, God bless Ricardo, correctly the spelling, so we know it was a, a type or a change with the keyboard. Then Muriel also changed, everybody cannot be typing the same, it's, it's, it's a keyboard. Then Simone, Megavolt, it also got changed to Basement Granny, but we know it's Bashment Granny. Um, Yep, and that's all the answers came in. Yes, Ricardo, I, I corrected that. All right, so choose the next category, Ricardo, and for how many points? <laughs> it's uh, Choose the next category um, and for how many points? Yeah. Okay. Oh, my prime minister is for 200. Okay. It's the only reason why I am still saying it. Name this former prime minister. Name this former prime minister. Everybody run out. Don Mel, welcome, welcome. All right, and I see the answer that I am looking for, and it is who is Edward Siaga, and that is for 200 points. Let's see who first came in with the correct response. All right, so first on the board with the correct response is Daniel, and that is for 200 points. 200 points to Daniel, then mm -hmm. truck life, God bless, Don Mel, okay, didn't put in Edward, um, Jam Fett, Nardi, Ricardo. <laughs> Go All right. Um, Sonia also came in, Megafold. I got what, Volt, 
Okay. Okay, so it's saying Prime Minister for 500. Make sure I'm seeing that correctly. Oops. Name this former Prime Minister. Name this former Prime Minister. Name this former Prime Minister. All right, I see the answer that I am looking for. And it is, who is Alexander Bustamante? Who is Alexander Bustamante? And that is for 500 points. So let's see who picked up those 500 points. Let me just remove one pin. See the chat better. So let's see who picked up those 500 points. Okay, it started there. <laughs> Jump fit. Um, okay, Mega Gold, um, your internet might be um, delaying, so you need to refresh. Yes, Ricardo, trying to get ahead of the game. So, first on the board with the correct response is Daniel. And that is for 500 points. Okay, Andrew didn't get to finish. Then God bless. Um, <laughs> then Chuck Life, Don Mel, John Fett, Tanya, Megafold, Nordy. Um, yep, that's how the answers came in. Uh, also, Sean came down later. Okay. Can go ahead and read that. Okay, so the score as it is God bless on 300 points. Sean, 500 points. Truck Life, 600 points. Daniel and Ricardo on 1,100 points. And not, oh, okay, oh, now it was cancelled, right? Yeah. All right, so choose the next category and for how many points? So, Danielle, let's set up and then come out strong. Choose the next category and for how many points? Um, Danielle, did you do that already? Oh, it says Prime Minister for 330. I missed that. It was way ahead of me. All right, everybody run out. Who is this former Prime Minister? Everybody run out. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> all right so remember name of a person you have to put who is and then the answer and i see the answer that i am looking for and it is who is bruce golding so who is bruce golding and that's for 300 points who is bruce golding okay so that's where it started yep Truck life, 300 points for truck life. Um, so truck life, God bless, Nardi. Um, <laughs> jump at your phone, your keyboard working against you, man. Um, and Danielle, 
Simone didn't put gold in. Dan, Sonia, Mega Gold, um, Beverly, India, Muriel. All right, so it's in theater for 400, the truck life. Most known for his television series, Titus in Town, which Jamaican actor has been featured in over 20 plays and movies. Most known for his television series, Titus in Town, which Jamaican actor has been featured in over 20 plays and movies. Remember the name of a person? It is who is. Okay, I yeah, need his name. Good. All right, I see the answer that I am looking for, and it is who is Glenn Campbell or Titus? Who is Glenn Titus Campbell? But I needed Glenn Campbell. So that is for 400 points. So let's see who first came in with the card to respond. Okay, Jim said you put what is, then he didn't finish his name. Okay, yeah, Jim said is going to get it because he did put Glenn Campbell at top and he just put that. Um, what is what then he corrected it. So first, um, so Jim said mm -hmm. for, what is it, 400 points, then truck life. Tiffany, thank you so much for still being here. Tiffany, happy new year. Happy Friday. So good to see you. Hope everything is okay. How is the baby doing? And God bless. Daniel, Truck Life, Beverly, um, Muriel. <laughs> All right. Tiffany got that not jump fit. Let me go back up. Let me just go back up a bit. Okay. All right, theater for 400. It started there. So, jump fit. Let me refresh. Maybe I didn't. I'm sure I did. Let me refresh just to make sure. And then look back at it. Okay, yes, it is it is jam fed. Initially put what is Glenn Campbell, then he corrected and it said who is Glenn, but we know we know the last name Campbell because he did put it before. So that would be um jam fed. So that's correct. All right. And yeah, Muriel also got that. All right. So He's saying um, 500 theater, continue with theater for 500. Tiffany saying, you get that? No, Tiffany, hush, it's jam fed. Because they corrected it before you put your, your answer. If you look at top, you see that he had Glenn. What is Glenn Cam? And he quickly corrected it and put who is Glenn. But he didn't put back the Cam, but we know he knows it's Campbell. He just quickly corrected the what to who. All right. So he had said um, theatre, completing theatre. I think I thought that it's all for 500 because it's lost in the mix now. Um, Doug, the king of comedy, Oliver Samuels, has done many inspirational and funny plays. Name his and Jamaica's first television series. So name um, Oliver Samuels first and also Jamaica's first television series. Oh, 
Na dám len krvé slovo. Score as it is. God bless and 300 points. Sean, 500 points. Truck Life, 900 points. Jamfet, 400 points. Daniel and Ricardo, 1100 points. Okay, Daniel, look on to you did have Glenn Cameron, but what is, and then he corrected it to with Glenn, so he did have the correct answer. <laughs> um, David, upon night shift, that's the way over here, go on, so. All right. Is the charge, okay. All right, so let me see. The correct answer is what is Oliver at large? And that is for 500 points, Oliver at large. So that was the first um, Jamaican television series and the first series for Oliver Samuel. All right, so let's see. I already refreshed. All right, so first on the board with the correct response is Jamfet for 500. What is Oliver? Wait, wait, wait. Oliver at Mac, no. Okay, corrected it before somebody has got it. Yes, so Jamfet, Oliver at Lunch. I think the phone changed it to French. <laughs> then God bless. Nardi, yes. Nardi, then Tiffany. Um, Andrew, then Daniel, look again at his first response of what is Glenn Campbell. So if he goes back to correct, he has to get it because he did have the name with what, but the only thing he did was put what is. All right. So Sean also came with Oliver at large. All right, and that's all the answers came in. All right, so Jamfet is saying civics for 300. We can't believe Daniela light candle for me. <laughs> civics for 300. This is what Michael Manley called the stick that was given to him by Haile Selassie. What is the name that uh, Michael Manley called the stick? That was given to him by Haile Selassie when he visited, um, when they met each other. Let's put it that way. All right. Let me see if they have it fully. All right, I see the answer that I am looking for. <laughs> Jump in the contact clear. All right. What is the rod of correction? So he named the, the, the um, stick the rod of correction, and that is for 300 points. <laughs> oh, my goodness, you guys, there's something else. Okay, so it started there. <laughs> All right. Okay, didn't complete that. What is okay? So first on the board with the correct response is Sonia for three hundred points. That's just the rod of correction. Some people have the rod, but they didn't complete it. Then Don Mel, Megawatt Volt, sorry. Then um, 
Beverly, let me see how those Amirelle didn't complete it either. And All Donnell, right. um, God bless. <laughs> All right, so that's how the answers came in. So Sonia, choose the next category and for how many points? Oh, you're only seeing your answer? Refresh, um, mega, megawatt, refresh. And Sonia is saying Jamaican dance for 500. Yeah, 500. This is very study. So you're going to, um, I give you the clue and you name the dance. So this is a very study. Name the dance based on that clue. This is very study. Name the dance based on that clue. All right, I see the answer that I am looking for. So study is the giveaway and it is what is shampoo? Calls, dance called shampoo and that is for 500 points. So let's see who picked up those 500 points. Truck life for 500 points. Then Tiffany, Danielle, God bless, Jamfet, Muriel, and that's how the answers came in. Who we'll get this? Truck life. What points? 500. Okay, so the score as it is, God bless and 300 points, Sanya and 300 points, Sean, 500 points, Daniel and Ricardo, 1,100 points, Short Life, 1,400 points, and Jamfet, 900 points. Okay, so choose the next category and for how many points? <laughs> it was the mega bad show. Board pack up like Sadi, Metele, Daniel. <laughs> Jam fed do you have the over there at your word for first year at your word lime and salt then you have cut and clear now you're asking why do the Edens rage <laughs> oh my goodness alright so choose the next category come on and for how many points the truck I choose already and I miss it. Let me just look on here where I can see it a bit bigger just in case. I am the one who missed it now. Okay, choose um, the next category. see the strength of the internet. Why is it doing this? It looks weak up there, but it looks strong when I open it. Oh, light just went. Oh, sorry. Oh, my goodness. Jip is not of no manners. No manners at all. No, you choose truck life. Still choose. Nobody chose. We were still waiting on you. So choose quickly. Civics for 100. High school that PJ Patterson attended. Name the high school that PJ Patterson attended. So name the high school that PJ Patterson attended. <laughs> Oh boy. Welcome, welcome, Peter. Happy Friday. Thank you so much for joining in. 
All right, I see the answer that I'm looking for. So known delays and what is Calabar High School. So PJ Patterson went to Calabar Boys High School. And that is for 100 points. So let's see who picked up those 100 points. Ricardo for 100 points. Then Jamfet. Um, God bless. Sonia. Okay, Sonia, she corrected that. It was jumbled. All right, and that's how um, Mr. Dave, welcome, welcome. And it's what it's all about. And that's all the answers came in. So choose the next category and for how many points. So um, Truck Clyde. No. No, Ricardo, choose the next category and for how many points. Ricardo, 100 points. Okay, so he's saying dance for 100. This Elephant Man song have a height dance. This Elephant Man song have a hype dance. And hype is a clue. All right, I see the answer that I'm looking for, and it is what is crazy hype, and that is for 100 points. So crazy hype for 100 points. So let's see who first came in with the correct response. Truck life. So truck life for 100 points. Crazy hype. Then, uh, then India, Muriel. Okay, and that's how the answers came in. Truck life is scientific, so 200, keeping it moving along. And Jamaican money originally called the Concord. Which money did we use to call the Concord? Which the um sorry, which money in Jamaica's was in Jamaica, sorry, was referred to as the Concord. What note was referred to as the Concord? All right, and I see the answer that I am looking for, so no delays. So what is the $100 note was referred to as the Concord? So the $100 Jamaican note was referred to as the Concord. Sorry. Um, so let's see who first came in with the correct response. <laughs> oh, should go what? You have to try and say it fast. Your internet have to be kicking. And first on the board is something the zeros moving into each other. Okay, so first on the board is Jamfet. Then how much for Jamfet? How much for Jamfet? Um, two hundred. So Jamfet. Then God bless Ricardo. Candy Max. Okay, put the dollar sign on the end. Doesn't matter. Okay. And Mr. Dave. That's how the answers came in. All right, Jamfet is saying civics for 400. Edward Thiago was born in, name where Mr. Thiago was born. Name where Mr. Thiago was born. I will be right back one second. I need to like unfold it to the board.
Okay. And that is a double point answer. So that is 800 points. So let's see the and let's see the response. Sorry, guys. I just could not hold that anymore. All right, let's see the responses. Let's see if I have a correct response so far. All right, I see the answer that I am looking for. So what is Boston, Massachusetts? So he was born in the US and that is for 800 points. So let's see who picked up those 800 points. <laughs> no mega no mega <laughs> all right so first on the board with the correct response is Jamfet. much points 800 points it's a double point answer. Then Jamfet, um, Don Mel, just make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay. Then, okay, then you go back and say where it is. Then Peter, Megawatt, Muriel, Tanya, Danielle. Tiffany, Beverly, Chocolate, um, Christmas is over. No more silent night, Baron. Mm. <laughs> all right. Okay. Let me so speak this for. Okay. okay. Um, Beat and Teach also have Boston. Okay. So God bless and Sonia on 300 points. Sean, 500 points. Daniel, 1100 points ricardo 1200 points short life 1500 points and jump vet in the lead 1900 points what yeah jump vet all right jump vet through the next category <laughs> like my thought working <laughs> oh my god I learned that Sega was born in a plane. I can um, Google it. It says the egg was born in Boston, Massachusetts. And that's what I have in my civics book as well, because I have a copy of a Jamaican civics. All right. So civics for 500. The first authentic Jamaican coin, and this is a double score answer. So you're going to get 500 points plus double your overall score. So what named the first authentic Jamaican coin? What was it called? Hmm? Name the first authentic Jamaican coin. Not seeing it yet. I can give you a clue. Carmen Akigalin did market. Not a no sell. Yeah. Carmen Akigalin did market. Not a no sell. I do you give the answer. What a Saturday night. Lord, what a night. What a Saturday night. Carmen Akigalin did market. All right, I see the answer that I am looking for. So, the first authentic Jamaican coin is Kwati. And I just put a footnote there. A Kwati was a small copper coin of very small value. A Kwati also spelled that was worth one and one half pennies. Also expressed at three half pennies are six farthings. This is all foreign to me. It was 
not in fact a minted coin rather it served as a standard unit when buying and selling goods were commonly sold in amounts which were worth a quarter or multiples thereof if the value of a good changed the amount that buyers receive in exchange for a quarter went up or down accordingly so that is for 500 points and then the overall score is gonna be doubled let's see who first came in with the correct response Right, I'm just refreshing. So let's see. Yes, Don Mel, refresh, refresh your page, and you'll see that Jamfit came in ahead of you for that one. Boston, just refresh your page because you're gonna see yourself first if you don't refresh. All right, <laughs> first on the board with the correct response is Peter. Peter, so 500 and then double is 500 to 1,000. So just 1,000 points then. Then God bless Sonia, Ricardo, Jamfet, Tiffany, Megawatt. Oh, Sonia put off a penny. She had a she had a, an idea. <laughs> Penny yes, me used to hear my grandmother, my maternal grandmother top. No, paternal grandmother top, but Penny Apney. She care Penny Apney got market. So the score as it is. God bless. And Sonia, 300 points. Sean, 500 points. Peter, on 1,000 points. Daniel, 1,100 points. Ricardo, 1,200 points. Trot Life, 1,500 points. <laughs> and Jump Fit, 1,900 points. Mm. Jump Fit can be stick tonight. And Guillaume Ricardo, so whopping. <laughs> see, see um, Jump Fit cards in your mega votes, but Jump Fit is in, in, in France. <laughs> Michael Jackson, welcome, welcome. All right, so choose the next category and for how many points, and that would be, um, oh my goodness, let me go back up. That would be Peter. So Peter, choose the next category and for how many points. Okay, so, oh, it's one category that's left, sorry, so it's just to choose the points. Um, so for 400, this dance legend had an untimely death in January of 2005. So name the dance legend. This dance legend had an un untimely death in January 2005. And remember, name of a person. If you're naming a person, then it is going to be who is. And I see the answer that I am looking for. So no delays. And it is who is Bogle. So who is Bogle? And that is for 400 points. So let's see who picked up those 400 points. Okay, so first on the board is Truck Life, then Ricardo. And what's the point for Truck Life? Oh, no, sorry, Truck Life has what is instead of who is, he has what is. Okay. Um, okay, then Ricardo tried to correct it, but the spelling is jumbled, so it's actually Ricard, Um, It's actually Ricardo, and that is for 400 points. 400 points, sorry, Ricardo. Ricardo. Then Jamfet came with um, Bogo. 
Um, okay, any character dispel in there then? God bless Peter, Tiffany, um, Candy Map, Truck Clive, Daniel, Megafold, Megawatt Vote, um, Beverly, <laughs> Mr. Dave, um, Sean also came in with um, Bogo. Oh, hush, hush, Megawa. <laughs> so the internet act up sometimes. It's the same way here that the, the signal seems as if it's going on coming. Because it's in the basement. And although I have a booster for each floor, sometimes it's still act up. So I don't know. Because the, the signal keeps showing weak a few times since the game started. All right, so choose the next category. So, sorry, choose how many points because it's one category. Sorry, choose how many points. Empress, happy Friday. Welcome, welcome. I was saying that Empress, the game, game, I didn't see you. I recorded not even give you a dingy. Ricardo, no, tell me last week, say no. Nah. Ricardo, <laughs> Ricardo, tell me earlier, say no, nah, Dingar. <laughs> this is a well-known Chinese, well-known Chinese cuisine named the dance. This is a well-known mm -hmm. Chinese cuisine. One more after this. Okay. So this is a well-known Chinese, Chinese cuisine. So name the dance. Uh, all right, I see the answer that I am looking for, and it is what is stir fry, and that is for 200 points. So, stir fry 200 points. Let's see who first came in with the correct response. Truck life. 200 points, stir fry, then Ricardo, <laughs> but what is fuck choice? Funny. Um, Don Mel, <laughs> then India, Beverly, and Sean, that's how the answers came in. All right, so just one left now for 300 points. So I'm just going to go ahead and reveal that. Oh, our phone plug in and it's on silent. So if he was calling, um, shoot, would only vibrate. What you're gonna say, what you're gonna do, name the dance. What you're gonna say, what you're gonna do, what you're gonna say, what you're gonna do. <laughs> hush, hush, Empress. All right, I see the answer that I am looking for, and it is what is Stucky, S T O O K I E R S T U C K Y, or if you want to spell it, and that is for 300 points. So let me see who first came in with the correct response. <laughs> is it Jamfit going to win the night? Is it Trump Life going to win the night? Is it Ricardo going to win the night? All right, so let's see who first came in with the correct response. So it should start there. Oh, Jamfit just have fling out butterfly for most of the dance. Then it must stick at one point. <laughs> All right, so first on the board with the correct response is truck life. Wow. So the spelling and everything all over the place. Um, that is for 300 points. Wow, truck life win the Tiffany, India, Beverly. Um, 
megawatts, megawatts, then Sonia saying, thanks for another great afternoon. You're welcome, Sonia, and thank you so much for your continued support and endorsement. Really appreciate it. We have a wonderful rest of the weekend despite the very cold weather. Oh, gee. <laughs> the very cold, 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 frigid weather. Don't want to go outside again. <laughs> then um, Sean also came in with Stucky. Yes, poor us. My goodness, it's not easy out there at all. All right, and that's how the answers came in. <laughs> Jump in the catch the accent, lol. All right, so the scorekeeper is tallying the score. So congratulations to everyone who made the board. Congratulations to everyone who participated and managed to answer. So the, the um, race is not um, for the Swift, but those who can endure to Okay. It's also for the Swift as well, because you have to be fast. Uh, exactly. And also have to have a very good and strong Wi-Fi. So, so starting at number five on the board is Peter with 1,000 points. It was a well-played game. Um, close win, right? So it goes to show you that, you know, um, it was a hard-fought game. Um, number four, Daniel with 1,100 points. Number three, Ricardo, 1,600 points. And in number two, Jamfet, 1,900 points. And of course, the winner, Short Life, with 2,000 points. Oh, Jamfet, same Wi Fi was firing, but he missed the first part. All right. Really <laughs> yes, Sean, Sean fell off. Didn't make it to the top five. Please then have my. Okay, so Truck Life, put Tiffany um, beside Truck Life. Okay. Um, Tiffany yeah. and Truck Life. Yes, he wants them to get half. Okay, um, Truck Life noted. Thank you so much for that. So that's how we do it over here, guys. We share Somebody or if up. you yeah, don't so have anyone in Jamaica, yeah. um, that or you don't have a Jamaican um phone number, you can donate it to someone in the chat or you can donate it to a family member at home. All right, so Daniel wants it to his new number. Okay, Daniel, I'll do that. I, still, I have your numbers. I have both your numbers. Okay. Okay. Okay, Sean, so you did not come in on the top five, so you do not get any credit this week. It's only those who came in on the top five, so you did not make it to the top five. I know you have, um, did you? All right, let me see if anybody else is saying anything else. Okay, all right. So congratulations again to all the winners. Really mm -hmm. appreciate um, the continued support. And Peter, I think, about the about this second drawer. I have a mm -hmm. number for Peter. If, yeah. yeah, let me just make sure. Um, Andrew was not firing so well tonight. So I hope um, he's feeling okay. Okay, yeah, so I have a number for Peter already. So Peter, if you want me to send it to the existing number that I have, you can just say um, yes in the chat. If you want it to be sent to a different number, you know how to hook me up. Number you have me. The number you have may have changed. Okay, so you can send me the um, updated information on IG. And it's an underscore mystic two. But um, you should be following me on IG because um, that's where I got the first number. So you can um, update it on um, IG. Okay. I'm <laughs> under my comfort to play Jeopardy going back to warm up myself. Okay, Sonia. Right. <laughs> Good night. Try and keep warm. Make sure if you're going outside, everywhere is covered because the frostbite comes so quickly. 
one of my coworkers yesterday, um, her son was outside the door from for two hours. He was not able to get in the house and he got frostbite on his toes and he was only 10 years old. So it's just that cold. He could not get the garage door open because apparently it was frozen so the cold would not work. And then um, he was stuck out there for a while until the neighbor realized what was happening and called his mom. <laughs> and then said, oh, for me not even looking through my window, my dear, because you look on the windows and you have ice that has formed inside on the windows as well, I noticed. But all in all, I still can't sleep without my fan. My fan has to be on still for me to sleep. <laughs> Okay, um, let me see what Daniel is saying. Okay, and thanks for the concern. Today was an off day for me. I'll be back next week and I will be fired. God, All right. okay, I realized that you were a bit off. I realized something must not have been a good day for you today. But I hope, I hope that whatever is happening, it gets better. Um, and um, you'll be in better spirit next week. No, Sonia, not kidding at all. <laughs> not kidding at all. Even if the AC on the fan, the fan has to be on. If the, if the um, furnace is on, the fan still have to be on. I get hot flashes at times, and I don't know if you've experienced those. It's it's not fun. <laughs> it's when it's a jump it, make sure you go to bed early next week. <laughs> And I I hope and see my comments after two weeks. Bye, y'all. Friends, <laughs> good night, and bye. We go for yourself going up. Bless them. See y'all next Empress. weekend. Okay, no no problem, friends. Thank you so much for tuning in and rest well. Is there if she say anything else up with the top? Okay, so big up on yourself. She going now. All right. Yeah, John Fett, sleep and wake up already because it's we always in France right now. I'm looking to start him day while we're looking to go to bed. <laughs> I go through that fear of tooth and got it done. It's no fun at all. My one not done. It's just beginning. Sometimes even at work, I'm in the middle of getting reports and it hit me and I just, the closest thing I can catch paper flying everywhere with me trying to find. <laughs> welcome. Well, I, Sonny Apostle, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. Then Grand Rising Mystic Sensation. Uh, Mega, what is saying? Con guys, continue with the great job holding the government accountable and open the eyes of those who are sleeping. Bless yes. yourself, Mega. What? Mm -hmm. All we can do, education is the key, and edu can only educate to empower. And what we do with what the information you get on election day, up to the voters now. All right, so, and remember the march, remember the march in Florida um, next week, um, Friday, which is the 19th. So th those who are over there in Florida, make sure you go out in your numbers and um, support the march. It is very important to go out there and um, join in joining the march so that they can see that we are strong in numbers and that we are serious we mean business we need change and we need better government um, governance and we also need a better future for our country and our future generation so make sure you go out there guys and um support in the march and tomorrow um Reason with what Ratigan will be on, and um, they are the ones who are organizing the march and stuff, and they're trying to arrange in different states, different countries, both for Canada, 
the US and the UK. All right, so make sure you go out there and support. All right, guys, so we have come to the end of um, um, our live for tonight. Really appreciate each and everyone who joined in. Um, really appreciate the continued support. Thank you to the new, the, the new subscribers. Thank you to those who have been on the journey with us and are still journeying with us. Um, really appreciate each and every one. And um, as I said before, hope everyone had a wonderful, have a wonderful rest of the weekend. Have a wonderful and productive week. Until next week, safe travel on the gravel. Love, peace.